Blessed art thou, Yehovah God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In Yehoshua's name, we come before you, O Yehovah, even in these last days, as the children of Israel, Most High, giving testimony that you are righteous, that you are just, that you are merciful, O Most High. And we come here even as the descendants of even our ancestors who were slaughtered in this place, asking and begging for righteous judgment upon Babylon. In 1863, men, we thought that we were Fighting the war, we know what it was to hit the street, so we spread the rumors. We told all our families, we gathered the old folks and the children and hit them leaves. We were walking and running, cause they said that we'll be free. Just go down in this hole, and if you make it, then you will be up north with the free folks. We you chilling, you eat, folks. I didn't know what it was, but somehow I did sit some heat. But that's the war with these heathens. We know where it could have been. We know if we made about this whole way it should have been So we took to the streets You know the rumors spread it real fast We told all the Hebrews You know it made them happy The mama to grandma Everybody in this whole At least the amount that we can get to go And that's 20,000 Man this shit out of control It's been six months How the hell we get this devil's punch bowl oh. In night almost high And hold themselves not guilty They hold themselves innocent even as they shed the blood of our, of our sons, of our daughters, of our elders, Father, of the young and of the old, of the weak and of the strong, almost how they have shown no pity, they have shown no mercy. When the slaves were released from the plantations no, no and the occupation, they overran matches, and the population went from about... The market is filled with free, the match has been filled the same, they slaughtered and murdered us, we wish we were still the slaves, they rather be they rot in their life away, invested with small pops, corruption would never stop. While working around the clock, they buried you where you drop. Your planet us like we crops and hope that we never sprout. But Yah has a final plan, deliver us from this land. He never intended for us to be destroyed by the hands of man. Kidnap our soul, the devil punch bowl, still in existence under FEMA's control. that she becomes drunk off of the blood of our people. Oh, Jehovah, have mercy on us. Even gather the remnant of Judah and of Israel together in spirit and in truth. Remove even the divisions, O Most High God, that keep us from coming together. And let us come together in love and forgiveness and unity, Most High, and in faithfulness and in obedience and submission in spirit and in truth. We just pray on behalf of our people, Yisrael, O Most High, that you have caused us to stand in these last days. Give us strength, O Yehovah, for the Ruach HaKodesh upon us, O Yah. Pour out the latter rain, O Most High. Show mercy unto us. Deliver us, O Yehovah. Open the gates of heaven unto our prayer. Yehoshua, receive our prayer. O Yah, receive our prayer. Heavenly Father, let our prayer be as of, of of a sweet incense before the altar of that throne, O oh God. Remember us. Remember the covenant that you made with our forefathers. We repent. Forgive us, O oh God. We have transgressed. We have dealt iniquitously. Our, our men and our women and our sons and our daughters, we are all guilty. But we repent with the whole heart. Forgive us, Yahweh. Deliver us, Yahweh. Pardon our transgressions. Salak Banu. Forgive us, O oh Yah. Deliver us from this bondage, oh Yah. From, from this evil, from this pain, from this oppression, from, 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 no, no, from all this terror, day and night, oh Yah. Hear us, oh Yah. Deliver us, oh no, Heavenly no, Father. No, no, no. 
Yahushua, forgive us. But we have slaughtered you and we turned you. We just we pray, just pray on, behalf on behalf of our people, of our people Israel, 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 almost high, that you have caused us to stand in these last days. Give us strength for your hope. Pour the rock of your death upon us, O Yah. Pour out the latter rain, O Yah. Show mercy unto us. Deliver us, O Yah. Open the gates of heaven unto our prayer. Yahweh, receive our prayer. O Yah, receive our prayer. Shalom, family. All praises to the Most High. Hallelujah. I hope you are ready for a powerful testimony from our sister, Jackie McGee. She's about to join us in a moment. All praises to y'all. We're grateful to be here. Um, give me one second. Okay. Hallelujah. Yeah, she's about to join us, and we. She has a powerful 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 testimony to bring forth today about them rituals in hollywood and hollywood that they have them do in the music and the entertainment industry she is about to go in she's about to tell us what she's seen what she witnessed firsthand you know um and we are about to uh let her tell you from her own mouth some of the biggest rappers today she's she's known them and came up with them at the same time and she's mm. going to give her personal experience, as well as the parties that go on and these rituals that happen that they get to get people to sell their souls. So we think we just thank the most high for uh, allowing her to come out of that and to not get all the way immersed or caught up in it. For the most high saved her before she was able to actually do any of that bizarre stuff that we see going on, like at Balenciaga. Hallelujah. I'm going to I'm going to get in touch with her real quick one more time cuz I think her signal dropped so I'm mm. just going to okay here she goes down there all right Now we back You back in More if you could come right back in for us so that Hey Can you, you ready everybody packed up everybody's ready you know they know they're about to hear something they ain't never heard before from firsthand testimony, you know, so they're excited and they turned up. I see the chat is waiting and they like all praise to the most high. We give oh, all our hallelujah. And to Yah for hallelujah. Being our and our salvation. Okay, here he is back in. Okay, there you go. All right, family, get ready. I want to see some thumbs up. We want to mm -hmm. see some energy for our for the, for the Most High and for our beloved sister. So, yeah, um, Amen. All praise to the Most High, Yah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All praise to Yah. Hallelujah. Tonight. So, as always, we like to start off with a prayer, and we want to say Happy Feast of Dedication for those mm -hmm. keeping the Feast of Dedication according to the Enoch calendar. Happy Feast of Dedication. This is the time of the year when we rededicate ourselves mm -hmm. back to Yah and we purify our vessels, our temples, which are our bodies, so that the Father can use it to rebuild Zion, to rebuild the new Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. this, is that season. this is that season of victory over the Adam that the Maccabees won. This is that season where we rededicate ourselves in spirit, mind, and in body. Because we overcome the adversary, because we overcome the tempter, because we overcome the heathen. All of that is this season right now. And we are not just talking about it, but mm -hmm. we're actually demonstrating the fruit of it right now, tonight. The rededication of the temple, the rededication of our beloved sister, Jackie McGee, to the body of your host, Yohan Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> You know, the yeah. enemy is always trying to work against us. Mm, right. And um, I, I had to call on the father because, you know, he don't want he don't want this truth to come out and for us to really see what we need to see. You right. know, um, the one thing about our people and, and you and I talked about it the other day. Um, you said what Judah you told me what Judah meant. Yes. And and. Um, 
we are the tribe of Judah that are in, well, part of us are in the United States. Right. Um, I'm, I'm sure a remnant is somewhere else, you know, mm -hmm. of Judah. Right. But um, you, you told me that Judah meant praise. Yes. And when you when you think about that and you put that to the to the music industry, that's that's what we are. Our thing is praise. We want to we want to sing. We want to clap. You know, we want to dance. Everything is praise. Yeah. So any and everything, you know, how we get trapped up in it is. The beats, the, the beats yeah. get us going, mm -hmm. you know, the music. The music get us going. If it's some great chords, they're going to get us going. Even if it's a love song, it's going to get us going. But is it getting us going in the right spirit? Mm. Um, you know, what I, we talked about also when I did Make It Last Forever. Now, did we do that in love? Did me and, you know, Keith Sweat do that song in love? No, we did not. Um, so I can say... We didn't do it in love, and so it wasn't right. no lust, lust thing there. Right. Um, but music, you know, as music comes down and it changes every, I would say every ten years, something new is gonna come, right? Right. And from the the time we listen to music coming in with the Earth, Wind, and Fire, and um, you had Rick James, you had um Atlantic Star you had like all these big groups right. and when we listen to music we were just listening to music and we weren't thinking that it was something involved you know in the in these songs right mm -hmm. or in whatever these people are doing so I was out you know on the road we were blessed to be on the road with Earth Wind and Fire before you get to your to your testimony and your stories, we want to start with a prayer. Let me let me uh, okay. read a prayer for everybody and just honor Yah, okay? And then we want you to go right into it and pick up right from where you left off. Okay. All right. Blessed be thy name, Almighty Yah, great creating King, Yehovah of hosts, the first and the last, Yehoshua HaMashiach, the same yesterday and today and forever, our sword and our shield, our stronghold, our refuge, our deliverer, our salvation. We look you, we look unto you and lift your name up even at this time of dedication, oh Heavenly Father, as we rededicate ourselves unto you in spirit and mind and in body. And we thank you for this opportunity to come before your presence, even in this holy season. Forgive Hallelujah. us, oh Heavenly Father, Hallelujah. for our sins, for our iniquities, for the sins that we have spoken that we have thought and that we have done. And we ask most high that you would forgive our ancestors and our forefathers most mm -hmm. high for every transgression, that you would break the generational curses from our bloodlines, oh heavenly father, that you will remove the curses of Deuteronomy 28 from over our lives and you will restore the blessing of Deuter Deuteronomy 28 unto mm -hmm. us, oh heavenly Hallelujah. father. So we pray most high Yah, that you will restore and that you will renew Everything that the caterpillar, the canker worm, the palmer worm, and the moth have eaten, oh, Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. Restore the increase. Let the gifts and the talents be poured out on the saints. Mm -hmm. Renew us, oh, Heavenly Father, in every good way. We pray most high for thy daughter, even Sister Jackie mm -hmm. and We thank you for even saving her soul and for bringing her into the fold of the sheep of the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. We are thy lost sheep. And even as you have promised, you are bringing forth the great awakening, even before the eyes of the whole world, despite even the crafty counsel of the heathen against us, mm. while they sought together most high to make the name of Israel, Yisrael, no more. But your word is supreme. Heaven and earth will pass away, but thy word shall never pass Hallelujah. away. Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, for not one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass away till all the law be fulfilled. Mm. And you are fulfilling prophecy in these times. And we are seeing revelation, Most High, even before our sight and even in these days and times. So we pray, Most High, for your Holy Spirit to be poured out mm. upon thy daughter, that you would give her father a holy utterance, Most High. Let her mm. speak and even let the people hear and consider. And let her testimony be used to glorify her name, to break the strongholds, to break the chains, to break, Most High, the fear 
the doubt, the confusion, oh Heavenly Father, the witchcraft, the spells, the lust, the temptations may it break it all because mm. you are mighty and your name is powerful and you are able. <clears throat> so hear us, oh Heavenly Father, grant us deliverance, break the power of the devil, break mm. the power of Satan, break the power, Father, of the fallen angels, break the power of the demonic mm. spirits, break the power of the Nephilim, most high. Break the power of the witches. Break the power of the wizards, oh heavenly father. Mm. Put them under your feet. Cast mm. them into the fiery furnace, most high. Hallelujah. Destroy them and tread them underfoot. And let your Hallelujah. name be lifted up on high. Mm. And let everyone proclaim you, almighty Yah of Israel, mm. in your son, Yehoshua's name. Mm. We have no redeemer and no salvation without you. But within mm. you is strength and deliverance and the victory. Hallelujah. We give you all the praises. All the honor and the glory. Now, always and forever. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Ooh, wait a minute. But I, oh, I have to apologize because I didn't let you pray before. Because, you know, we prayed. And I didn't realize we didn't, you didn't get to pray. And um, you, you have to do that first yeah. before all of this. Because we have a lot coming up against us. Even, you know, um brother Amit was saying, you know, he had to go in and, and bring the witchcraft, you know, spirits down. Like, don't even yeah. come up in this because it's right. a lot. It's a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Oh, hallelujah. That that prayer. Mm -hmm. That prayer. That's why we love that you, prayer. sister. We commend you because we know, you know, like yeah. when, when, you know, people like us in the truth, we talk about this stuff for years, right? And mm -hmm. nobody, you know, people listen, but nobody want to listen. But people still mm -hmm. listen. But right. it's different when you have the witness and the testimony and you were there. Yep. And you were there at the, you know what I'm saying, when when hip hop was really starting to take off and R&B was really starting to make its mark in the world. Um, you was there. You know what I'm saying? And so you saw how these things began to progress and you saw how things started to change. And you've seen it from when it was a time where, I mean, it might have been evident, but not as much to where it just took over the entire industry. You saw these things and you were amongst a lot of these same celebrities today and entertainers who now have so actually went and took the deal and sold their souls. You were there and you pulled out and you, and you were the most high gave you discernment to know, hey, mm -hmm. I got to make a change. You know, um, we were talking about it the other day as well for and for those that are on now that didn't you know hear the first part of this um we have we're gonna call them the hand um yeah. the hand is the one that's over you know every contract every everything with the record labels with movies you know um anything connected you know with movies and music they're over they're over right. the banks so when we go in and we do these deals and we have, you know, we have our two attorneys, you know, that's part of the hand. Then you, right. have, your attorneys, you have your attorneys that are making deals with the other hand. So everybody's mm -hmm. looking out for each other. Then mm -hmm. they take that and they send you to their accountants who right. that's the other hand. So everybody works together. You don't even know what you're signing because at the end of the day, they're saying they working for you and oh, I'm gonna get you this amount of money, yeah. right? And and this is what you, you know, this is gonna be your, this is gonna, we gonna give you 50, you know, 50 grand up front. We gonna give you a hundred grand up front. We gonna give you 500 grand up front. But they don't tell you what they put in that everybody else is gonna get. You know, whatever mm. little piece of the pie. But remember, right. all this money, all this money is now your debt. So now you're indebted mm. to them. And, you know, we just be happy to sign a deal. And, you know, you're just happy that you got a record deal because record deals weren't easy before to get. And now, even with the Internet and you have um, social media and all of that, you still need distribution. So right. what they doing now, mm -hmm. they doing distribution deals and they might throw in a 360 deal. So now they're going to get money off the 
you know, off of your merchandise, off of your touring or whatever. So, you know, it's different because of the, um, because of streaming services, but, right. you know, coming, coming from the nineties, from the late eighties to the nineties, you, you know, we, we saw the shift, but we saw how it was a lot of money moving through. Everybody right. was getting paid. Uh, the radio, radio gets paid. Uh, radio gets paid to this day. Like you can't mm -hmm. get no record played if you don't have no money to pay for it. Right. So if you see, you know, a Beyonce going up on the charts, and you see, you know, um, a country group or whatever, you see Megan Thee Stallion going. You know, she's going up on the charts. Then you see. Um, I don't know. It, it's like oh, so there's basically there's no way to even get on these charts in these days and times, especially without making some kind of deal that has to do with your soul and your eternal resting place, mm. right? There's a scripture that says in the book of Proverbs, the borrower is slave hmm. or servant to the lender, and so now. That's right. From what I'm getting from your testimony, so now you have from the tribe of Judah. Okay, um, we want to get some scripture, um, brother, brother Logic. Um, I want you to get ready to come in. I think we want to go to. I think it's Psalms 138. Uh, by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down and we wept. Let's get that scripture. Um, let me know when you got it, and I'll bring you in on, on in. I think it's one one um 38. Okay, let me uh, remove this. And shalom to all of our family in the chat. I want y'all to like and su uh, subscribe and thumbs up this video. Share this video because we're about to go in tonight. All right. Um, <clears throat> uh, by the rivers of Babylon, uh, there we sat down and, and we cried, it says, and our oppressors asked of us to make mirth. You have that script? Yeah, it's going to be uh, Psalms 137. Uh, let me uh, hop over there real quick. Okay. I believe it's, uh, 137. Psalms 137. Let me pull it up on the screen as we do this, All okay? Right. All right. Yes, sir. Let's go there. So this is Psalms 137. Psalms 137. Give me a second. Let me pull up the word. Here we yes, go. Sir. Psalms is a really powerful book, one of the most powerful books, mm -hmm. especially in fighting demonic spirits and witchcraft as well. It's in the music, just like King David played the harp. He played the songs and the unclean spirits fled from Saul when the demons came to attack him. So right. Psalms is filled with script uh, scriptures that break spirits all mm. right so we're going here to the book of psalm 137 all right if you could read that out yes sir this is the book of psalms chapter 137 starting at verse number one by the rivers of babel there we sat down yea we wept when we remembered zion we hang our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. All right, so there. our people are by the rivers of Babylon. So what that means is we're about to go into the slave trade. Our ancestors are about to be put on slave ships or they're just coming off of slave ships. By the rivers of Babylon, right? We sat down and we wept when we remembered Zion. So we remembered our homeland now our ancestors are taken over here, the tribe of Yehuda and Ephraim. And they hang their harps on the willows on the midst thereof. So all of the instruments of praise that we had with us from our homeland are now discarded and put to the side. And we're crying as they start to shackle us. This hmm. is what this saying so far. So let's go back to it. Verse three, for there they that carried us away captive required of us a song and they that wasted us required of us mirth saying sing us one of the songs of zion there they that carried us away captive 
Mm. The hand, the synagogue mm. required us a song. Hey, sing. <laughs> you Negroes are good at singing, aren't you? You're the tribe of Judah. You're the children of Judah. Aren't, don't you know how to praise? Don't you know how to make mirth? Right. So while we're weeping and mourning, they tell us we need to start singing. And then they that wasted us required of us mirth. So they wasted us and ruined our families and ruined our, our, our communities and our neighborhoods. And they said, smile. Mm. You don't have mm. nothing to complain about. Be mm -hmm. happy. You could have been stuck in Africa, but you're blessed to be here in America. And they said, mm. sing us one of the songs of Zion. So the people who carried us captive required us to sing was it because they wanted to worship the most high? Of course not. <laughs> it's because they wanted to monetize right. the praise and the worship of our people. And then that evolved into the modern day record industry. Mm. Tell us about that, sis. I want to uh, put you, uh, I want you to tell us about that. So when you're, when you're in the business, you know, like we know, um, a lot of us, you know, we do anything to get in the business, right? Mm -hmm. Anything. And I'm saying anything. So when y'all, when I'm, when I'm saying anything, y'all, <laughs> um, some of us didn't have to do that anything, but a lot so of them did have to anything. do it. All right. Now you're saying anything now that you've been in it. What are some of the things mm. that you saw other artists well-known artists what are some of the things that you've seen them do or know that they have done in order to get put on uh for this industry a lot of the female artists um that i know i wasn't there in the you know in the bedroom but i know a lot of them <laughs> right. slept i know a lot of them slept their way in um what does that a lot mean of female when it means to sleep your way in? Does that mean that they just have a boyfriend who's in the industry? Does that mean a record producer becomes their significant other? So what does that mean? Like what like what actually goes on? So it's it's whatever it's whoever is going to, you know, because you always have that person that's going to say, I can do this for you. I can I can get you in this way. I can get you up higher. I can take you, you know, to the president of the labels, you know, I can take you to his house. So mm. you're going to lay down with that person. It don't matter. It could be the producer. It uh -huh. could be, it could be the person that's, you know, the engineer, it could be whoever. Mm. A lot of people are willing to sleep their way in. And I'm, when I say sleep your way in, I'm talking about women sleeping with guys, women sleeping with women. Guys sleeping with guys. There's a lot of guys in our industry that have slept with guys. Tell us about it. it, it it's a lot of things. It's a lot of things that go on in the industry that people sleep on, you know, because they don't want to know. It's like, oh, I just like their songs. I don't want right. to know the, the, the nasty part of them. I don't want to know that they do this. I don't want to know that they like little boys. I don't want to know. Now, what I will call out and say that I know, um, I used to go up to, um, I used to go up to uh, J Records. Right. And that's, that was Clive Davis's, uh, his uh, label. Right. And every time I went up there, it would be these little boys. And I'm mm. like, why? Why is now when you little say boys? little boys, what are we talking about here? Young, you know, Clive is 110. Right. He's 110. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it's like, what are these little boys? You know, you see these young, like Spanish kids, you know, I would say young about 20, 21. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and you know, um, Brother Jediah, you know we're from New York. So you know how in the village, um, when we, when you go downtown on the West Side Highway, back right. in the day, in the 80s and all of that, um, when you go down to the village area, you know, towards the 
or you know, towards the, the um 12th Avenue side, 11th Avenue, 12th Avenue side, you saw a lot of prostitution, a lot yes. of young boys, yes. young, a lot of young boys. Right. Um, you see, you see these kind of things in the industry, but people choose to turn their heads and close their eyes, like you know, so and so got two boys sitting up in there, and you look. You ain't saying nothing. Nobody's saying nothing because everybody want to check. Right. So you're not saying nothing. And yeah, but, I mean, but what you're talking about, okay, people having fun. They okay, they they having, you know, they're having sex with each other, but that don't necessarily mean they're selling their souls. I mean, they just, you know, they just hooking up. But are there people that actually sell their souls? Are there people that actually take their name and sign it in blood? Are there people who do rituals? Of course or it is. is. They, have secret, they have secret societies all day. Mm. All day. Mm. So there are all, kind of stuff, all kind of stuff in the background. I, so I went to a party. So what are these now, secret I'm gonna societies? Tell <laughs> Let me tell you about this party I went to. With, yeah, with, uh, let's, go. let's get great. into it. Mm -hmm. I didn't when know. Now I'm going to sit up here and make up something. I ain't going none of them little doors and you none said, of that extra what stuff. Party, you said what party I was went this to a, um. This was this was back in the day that Easy E was still alive. It was right before he died. Okay. Um, I was invited to a party to Dr. Dre's. Um, he had a, a house in in um, uh, Malibu. In mm. in all I remember is you know going around the little things and the, the, there's no edges. You you know there's no rails to get right. to where you go. Right. So me and my girlfriend we get there. And, you know, we all excited. Oh, we're going to a Dr. Dre joint, you know, right. Easy E and all of them there, you know, you hyped up. So we get there and it's like butt naked chicks walking around everywhere. Mm. So mm. I'm like, what, mm. what's going on here? You know, but it's like, it's natural. It's like you're in Sodom and Gomorrah, and, but nobody, nobody sees the wrong in it, but you. <laughs> so, so you know, right. you're the only one, right? And then when, and then when you hear that Easy E died of AIDS, then you want to know why y'all all having butt naked parties, you know? And it's mm. chicks running around butt naked because everybody wants to be a star, or everybody wants to be with a star. Mm. So either you come in, in the door trying to you know get sleep your way in it's like the same thing when i met keith you know he makes a joke on stage and i don't think it's funny i hate that he did this you know he was like i wanted to hit it when you know i yeah, really I wanted to hit it and, and you I know the drum does, do you like i'm like that's not funny and i told him after i was like why did you do that because but he was telling the truth he was telling the truth i really wanted to hit it and see that's the thing if they can get you that way, Key Sweat wasn't Key Sweat yet. So he wasn't nobody, you know? Mm. And it's like, I wasn't gonna give him none anyway. But if he was somebody and he said, you know, I wanna, I wanna give you a record deal mm -hmm. and, and you have to sleep with me. I would have said no. Because, like I told you before, I came in the business through my brother-in-law. So I was around, you know, M. Tume, James M. Tume. Um, James M. Tume and Reggie Lucas wrote some of the, the dopest songs on Stephanie Mills, um, mm. Phyllis Hyman, on um, Roberta Flack and Donnie Hathaway, The Closer I Get to You. Um, um, what's with uh, all the classics that came out of of um out of Philadelphia, right? The, the Philly mm -hmm. sound it was Philly international, you know that Philly sound. Right. So I came in with them, so you know I knew to say no. I didn't have to sleep with nobody to get in, but when you're you know the industry is so so sexual, and mm -hmm. now like back in the eighties to the to the nineties, you know. It was a big shift. It was, it got extra nasty. 
But now it's just demonic. It's not even it's not even mm. nasty no more. You know when when the songs were just okay. You hear right. a song and you're like, okay, yeah, yeah, you know, you dance into it or whatever. But now the songs are demonic. And even Dr. Dre, I'll say one thing that he does do. Dre's music is done, and a lot of a lot of rappers, music is done in low vibrations. So mm -hmm. when explain you get that. Explain, it's, it's that. explain what low vibration means and what it means to do music in low vibration. Explain that to the people. Well, you have chords. It, it's chords called, they call them the devil's chords. And they, they when really you play call these chords, they literally like, call it they literally call it the devil's chords. Devil's so chords. what what is mm -hmm. what does the devil's chords sound like? Mm -hmm. They're like um it's like a lot of sharps and flats. So if you hear a melodic song and you mm -hmm. know the melodic song, it just it just flows and it makes you feel good, right? Right. Okay. A melodic song of make you feel good because it's in those right keys. Okay. Um, a low vibration song is going to be in those keys like Dre does that, dun, 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 you know, like it's, mm, it's, okay. and it's, it's those, those sounds that are repetitive. And so, when you start singing them, so, it becomes more and more repetitive. And then you start rapping and you, you know, you rapping and you start cussing. With everybody else, you know, if if or whatever, it, it, it always be broke. You never have no mm -mm -mm endo to smoke. Like you just start, you know, all, all of a sudden you just going, you flowing with all of these, all of these joints, right? But not knowing that you're in low vibration music. So now Satan is bringing you in, and you're, you know, this repetitiveness of these songs. You're starting to say them over and over again. And what does it become? It becomes um, rituals. So now mm. you're singing stuff and it's a ritual. Now you're getting it in your head. So think about it. All these low vibration songs that are, that are being done by rappers, you're mm. singing them. You're singing them and they talk about murder and this and this and that. And you going in and you singing it and you getting it in. Uh, 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 and next thing you know, and you smoking. You smoked up. Now you want to kill somebody because you got that in you. Because you, you know, you done did that ritual. You done said it. And now you got that in you. Or it's sexy. And then, you know, oh, now this is, I hear these sexy songs. You know, this sexy. Oh, yeah. And then it makes you want to drink. It makes you want to have sex. Mm -hmm. It makes you lustful. So it's a lot of things that we listen to. And I'm guilty. So, um, you know, I, I repent again every time I think about it. I repent, Father, because I'm guilty. There's songs right. that I've done, you know, that had the, the ooh and the ah. And then, you know what I mean? And that's the mm -hmm. song, you know, that's the right. stuff that bring you in. And when I was singing it, yes, I was singing it in a lustful way. Yes. And we do that. You know what I mean? So we get caught up in music thinking that music is just, Oh, that's my jam. You know, that's mm -hmm. my joint. I love that song. You don't know. See, a love song is different. A love song, you know, you can use for your wedding. You can use for an anniversary, uh, anniversary or whatever. Wow. And you're going to have memory, memories, great memories, right? But when you have those old, um, you know, I don't know what happened, baby. But why did you leave me? I need you. Come on. You that's those things that take right. you to a whole nother place. So tell now you got lyrics like that. Yeah, tell us how lyrics like that, I need you, um, and all that. How did that how did that impact people's relationships? How did that impact the black family? Because from what I'm getting from you, from what you just now said, that it's not necessarily the lyrics, like lyrics you no know, can be evil. It can say kill, 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 uh you know, sex, 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 you know, not love, not, you know, mm -hmm. just fornication and just abomination. So you can write that down and you can say that out of your mouth. But from what you're saying tonight, you're saying, no, no, no. It's more than just the mm. lyrics, but it's the beat. It's the music itself that it's can the be music. the Because the chords so, are going to take you, the chords are going to take you to another place. So right. if you have chords 
that are in low vibration. And I'm trying to think of a song, a song song that's in low vibration, not a mm -hmm. rap song. Oh, I got it. Right. I got to think of it. Um, Chris Brown does a lot of he he's all over the place. Um, does R. I'm Kelly do anything of, like that? R. Kelly songs. See, R. Kelly songs were are very sexual. Mm -hmm. So if he has, um, you know, what got us with R. Kelly is. The music had that beat. So, you know, again, here we are. We like to praise and we like beats. We like, you know, so it's, I don't see nothing wrong, you know, with a little bump and grind. And you start singing it and it's like, that's my song. And then right. you don't realize you singing this over and over again. Next thing you know, you done call Pookie on the phone. And and mm. what you doing? You know what you doing mm. tonight? And and the same thing with um a guy calling a girl. You know he calling her up. What you, what you doing? You know and he got he got now he got baby face playing in the back. Now right. is baby face songs bad? No. But baby face songs are love songs. And Babyface talked about a lot of great things, you know. He he shoot, he turned it around and said what he would do, you know, for the for the woman. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll cook your dinner too as soon as I get home from work. Who right. would not want to hear that? You know, right. um, but what does mm -hmm. that make you do? Those songs make you go home. And you put it on and you might not be feeling so great. And you put it on next to, you know, you in a trance, right? And you're like, oh, shoot, let me think who I can call. Next mm -hmm. thing you know, you're giving your cookies and your Twinkies away. Because you. you done got into that, you know. Mm -hmm. So we don't realize that feeling good from music. Satan has taken our music and the love that he knows that that mm. we have in us for right. great music and to want to feel exactly. good, he took it to a whole different level. Yeah. So, mm. you know, now, and, and our people, you know, for me being in the industry, most I took me out. Like he just snatched me out. And it's not saying that I'm finished, but he snatched me out from that, that, you know, being in, in the industry that way. So now I, I can I can talk about them and I'm not scared to talk about them. People are scared to talk about our artists and our artists are demonic. Mm -hmm. We have Erica Badu look nuts. She's like a witch. Mm -hmm. She got all kind of stuff looking crazy about her. Her lyrics are crazy. She's, you know, she's calling the ancestors. She's doing all kind of stuff. And people are like, oh, I love me some Erica Badu. I love her. Not knowing that she's burning her panties and making incense. And that's witchcraft. And then it's like, you know, she's saying what she's doing. She's telling you. Now she's talking about she's waiting for aliens to come. I guess she's waiting for the Anunnaki, the fallen angel, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> which black people say the, the Anunnaki. Um, that's how we say it, <laughs> but the other right. people say it the Nunnaki. Um, so now you you know you have this other realm that's open, and now you got because we listen to this stuff all now you got a whole bunch of black women trying to do witchcraft. So it's everything let's, that we're saying. Let's talk about that. So now I've seen some um, some articles recently that there is a major increase of witchcraft in the black community. What I'm going to do as you're talking about this, I'm going to pull up that article and I'm going to show uh, like I've seen it was maybe about a year or two ago. There's an article come out and said that the number of witches in the black community has really grown exponentially in like the last 10 years. And now, as you say this. I'm thinking about Erica ba Badu back at the time mm. who didn't come out with the appearance of a witch, but she kind of made black women doing witchcraft. She kind of made it trendy. Trendy. And 
Mm -hmm. And then now that I think about it, yeah, I remember reading that witchcraft is really great increase among our community where that was something that was really frowned and shunned, frowned upon and shunned. So you I'm know, black about. women, you know, black women would be like back in the day would be like if if they did it, it was on the law. You know, it was yeah, you, had to do it on the law. you couldn't come yeah. out and just, you know, just do it like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Go ahead and talk about that. I'm gonna pull up this article. Did you have any questions you wanted to ask, Maury? I think uh, I, if I can read uh, from the second book of Adam and Eve, uh huh. And then it's, uh, it's kind of like uh, it's gonna line up for uh, for everyone listening, like and verify everything that Jackie's talking about. But yeah, mm -hmm. then I got I got a question after that, really, to uh, to get into. So the, the, we're gonna read from the second book of uh, Adam and Eve. Well, Adam and Kawa, chapter 20. So it says that after Cain had gone down to the land of dark soil and his children had multiplied therein, there was one of them whose name was Genun, son of Lamech, the blind who slew Cain. But as to this Genun, Satan came into him in his childhood and he made sundry trumpets and horns and stringed instruments, cymbals mm. and sultries and lyres and harps and flutes, and he played on them at all times at every hour. So it's kind of reminding me of like the low frequency vibration that you were talking about, Sister Jackie, and the repetitiveness of it every hour, every time. So we've got these low vibration melodies and beats in our head all the time, right? So then it goes on to say, and when he played on them, Satan came into them so that from among them were heard beautiful and sweet sounds that ravished the heart. So everything that you're telling us about the music industry, we're finding it in the scriptures as well. So um, this is interesting, though. So we're going to go on to uh, verse four. Then he gathered companies upon companies to play on them. And when mm. they played, it pleased well the children of Cain, who inflamed themselves with sin among themselves mm. and burn as with fire, while Satan inflamed their hearts one with another and increased lust. Lush. among them mm. okay. uh, mm. Satan also taught Genun to bring strong drink out of Com and mm. then Genun used to bring together companies upon companies in drink houses and brought into their hands all manner of fruits and flowers and they drank together so I'm just going to read this uh, this last verse, verse 6 thus did, the, thus did this Genun multiply sin exceedingly he also acted pride and taught the children of Cain to commit all manner of the grossest wickedness, mm. which they knew not, and put them up to manifold doings, which they knew not before. So everything that you're saying, we find it in the word. So my question also is that it speaks like it starts off with Satan coming and teaching Genun how to make these instruments. Then he influences the music and he makes Satan himself is making the music sound beautiful. So now we're understanding low vibration from the scripture mm -hmm. is Satan himself uh, lowering the vibration because right. he masquerades as an angel of light. But that's a low light, it's a dark light. All right. So, but, you know, mm -hmm. as you I don't I don't want to uh, stop no, your thought, but as, mm -hmm. as you are talking about uh, low vibration music and I'm starting to think of a song that Dre did that gets me in that place. It kind of gets me hyped up, but it sounds kind of like enchanted a little bit. California love. Is that mm -hmm. like- Yes, is, yes. Is that a low fire, fire yes. Uh, yes. frequency? Yes, yes. That beat. It puts you right. in that, it's low. That is a very low um, vibration song, yes. Right. I was trying to think of it. I was like, you know, let me think mm -hmm. of some song that get me feeling that kind of way. And when I hear it, it get me moving, but it kind of sound a little bit eerie to me a little bit, but I could never put my finger on the reason why. And now he, I get he, it. He does. Um, Dre, Dr. Dre, why, why do you think they were called Death Row? They, um, a lot of their stuff, mm. most of their songs were low are were done in low vibration. Even the song that he did for Mary J. Blige, you know that the um let's get it funky, yeah. da, 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 da. just so you 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 can hear that. But that's weird mm. too. 
You know, you right. like it, you see it in your fingers, but it's like, is this kind of weird? Does this feel a little strange in my spirit? You know, you you get that, especially if you're awake. You know what I mean? Right. Or even if you halfway woke, you know, it's like, right. I don't know, something might not be right about this, but go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, man, somebody said, the brother actual said 50 cent in the club. Yeah. Mm, that's a good one, right? I, I now I get yeah. it. Like now mm. I, I can I can hear what you're talking about, man. Man. Yeah. Um, and then and what comes on top of it is the lyrics, and then they become repetitive. You know how many times we done sung the birthday song, the 50 cent in the club? Right. How many times? Right. So many times, you know, because you it's it's you know it's supposed to be a birthday song, right? So it, it gets crazy. Right. Yeah. I'm going to pull up this article. Oh, you were saying something, Maury, right? You wanted to finish that? Yeah, no, I was just saying that in, a, in verse 6, it says the grossest wickedness, which they knew not, and put up uh, manifold doings, which they knew not before. So I suppose once we've gone through uh, this article, it would be good for Sister Jackie to describe to us like some of the grossest wickedness that, uh, that happens in the industry. Yes, yes, yes. Remember that because after we I want to read this and right. and insist if you can answer that, that would be good. All right. Um hey brother logic, this is an article from NBC News. Um, I think from they usually have the date on here. Um, but the title of it, let me let me zoom in on this title because it's really key on what we're talking about here. We're reclaiming these traditions. Black women embrace the spiritual realm. There's a revived fascination with witchcraft and the occult for black women. Mysticism is about empowerment and taking up space in a world that often marginalizes them. So now when Sister Jackie was talking about Erica Badu, it made me think of this mm -hmm. article. And I wanted to see if uh, you can you know read that so if i look at some of this imagery that they're showing which is demonic or witchcraft a lot of this same imagery you can see on certain album covers i see this on album covers all the time you know mm -hmm. um and this makes me think of erica badu and the perfume that she was doing you know so there's a lot of stuff going on here with these things so um <laughs> yeah this is from october 30th 2020 if you could read that out Yes, sir. So Afros, Saris, Sphinxes, and Rainbows. These are some of the striking images found in actress Rachel True's new tarot deck and guidebook, True Heart Intuitive Tarot, released this month with a decidedly multicultural bent, best known for her starring roles in the 1996 cult hit The Craft, and the 2002 sitcom Half and Half, True has studied tarot for most of her life and wanted her guide to reflect the diversity of her New York City birthplace. True's tarot cards illustrated by Toronto artist Stephanie Singleton stand out for their inclusive imagery. So now we have black women who are fighting for inclusivity into witchcraft, where this was something that we shunned I'm just thinking of how perhaps the music, black music was used to actually make this acceptable where this was never culturally acceptable openly amongst our people. And I think about what sister said about Erica Badu. Uh, yes, sir. Also understand this mentions the craft um, in 19. That was a very popular movie with the three, the three girls, the three yeah. witches. So um, the, the, I don't. I can't remember her name. Uh, usually, somebody has to remind me. Maybe the chat knows the white lady in there. Uh, she's a real life witch, right? So mm. when the sister, this actress, is working on set with these people, this is where a lot of times they can pick up some of these influences. Mm. Um, and and just talking about the vibrations of the music, um, I do have two precepts. Um, Please go ahead. Um, uh, yes, sir. Um, so. We see here in 1 Samuel 16, 23, that uh, David, he used the heart to drive away the wicked spirits. It says, right. and it came to pass when the evil Ruach 
from Elohim was upon Shaul. Where, where are you now, at? I'm gonna get that on the screen. Yes, sir. You want me to hold first something? Samuel? Yes, sir. First Samuel, uh, chapter 16, verse 23. And then the second precept, um, was going to be Job 30 30. Samuel. Sorry, 30 30. Yes, sir. 16 23. Okay. Yes, sir. This is uh, 1 Samuel chapter 16, starting at verse 23. And it came to pass when the evil Ruach from Elohim was upon Shaul, that Dawid took in heart and played with his hand so that Shaul was refreshed and was well. Mm -hmm. And the evil Ruach or spirit departed from him. That's the effect mm. of the music. When we see mm -hmm. when we go to Job chapter 30, uh, verse 31, um, if you want to, if you can, I don't know if you want to hop over there real quick. And that's yeah, my definitely. Last one. Joel, what chapter? Uh, chapter 30. Mm -hmm. And verse 31. Okay, Joel 30. Yes, sir. And 31. So here we see a shift, a shift in the, in the spirit of the music a shift in the beat, right? Um, I believe the brother, the uh, Ye, he had mentioned they use these low frequency 808s uh, like uh, the sister uh, Jackie McGee was speaking of. So it says my, I'm sorry, this is Job uh, chapter 30, verse 31. Mm. My heart also is turned to mourning. Mm. So that's a transition. And my organ into the voice of them that weep. Okay. Mm. So, so now you have darkness, uh, um, back in 2019, uh, 2018, 2019, the kids called it sad boy music. Like you had certain mm -hmm. artists that did, um, uh, that passed away, this, that, and the other, some still around, but these rappers, it became a genre, like Little Peep and all those guys. And they did like this weird suicidal, you know, well, mm -hmm. I don't even know what I said. Right. Weird, you know. So, Self-hurting, self-harming. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. That's all I have, sir. Okay. We're going to go back to that article then. Um, yes, this sir. is about how they start making witchcraft and rituals mm -hmm. acceptable in a black community. And it came through the, the adversary promoting these things uh, through uh, witchcraft, through, through, through witches. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, continuing. The quote is, I wanted it to be representative of the world around us, said True, a rare woman of color to release a deck with a major publisher, Huff Houghton Mifflin, who in 2017 completed a stint as a tarot reader at the House of Intuition in Los Angeles. I just All wanted of these to things. have. Yeah, go ahead. I just wanted to have as many skin tones and flavors as we could possibly get in there. <laughs> and I'm happy about that because I know for me, when I was reading books and looking at decks, they were all very homogenous. So we're doing our best here to restore the images to the scriptures. <laughs> right. And to accurately reflect the children of Israel in the Bible. And then we have some of our people who are in darkness and they're trying to add our image to witchcraft. And that's just a sad, uh, uh, um, you know, contrast. As the awakening is happening, we have a demonic awakening on the on the left hand side occurring simultaneously. Continuing, having gained popularity as a parlor game in 15th century Italy, though some have linked them to. Mamluk playing cards from Turkey and mystical imagery from Egypt. Tarot cards are now widely used for divination and include symbolism that reflect life's lessons and challenges. But the most established tarot decks have a European aesthetic, which can make it difficult for people of color to connect with them. All right, let's get a scripture real quickly. Um, let's go to the book of Leviticus. Because this type of stuff is something that the Most High said we ought not do and ought not be involved with. So we're going to go to Leviticus 19. Mm -hmm. 
Leviticus 19. Let's see how these things um, go hand in hand. All right. Let's see what it starts, how, how it starts. Um, let's start at verse 26. And we're going to read a couple of verses down. Leviticus 19 and 26. This is Leviticus chapter 19, starting at verse 26. Ye shall not eat anything with the blood, neither shall ye use enchantment nor observe times. So we get around these people that we want to call the hand or we want to call the synagogue. Mm -hmm. And you're at a business meeting. And you're at a restaurant. And so, hey. You're an artist. Hey, yeah, I, I want to sign you. I really like your talents. Meet me at this restaurant and let's talk about it over dinner. Let's talk about it over lunch. Hmm. I'm going to give me a steak. You want some? I'll get you anything. You want a steak too? <laughs> and then when they get the steak, what is the steak filled with? Blood. Blood is rare. Blood. Yep. It's rare. And black people used to not eat rare meat, but now when I go nope. to steakhouse, I see black people eating rare meat all the yep. time. And that used to be something that we didn't see. That's right. And now you just you used to see the heathen do these things, and now right. you see right. our people doing these things more and more. So it starts with this eating of blood. So this eating of blood, which is now normal. Hey, you don't want a burger, you don't want a steak? Hey, you want a burger? Everybody likes burgers, right? Mm -hmm. Right. How are you getting your burger? Because I'm getting mine's medium rare. So you go, you yep. sit down because, hey, you want to you want to impress these people. You don't want to seem odd. You don't want to seem you want to fit in so that you can get you trying to, you know, trying to position yourself, you know, uh, for this deal. And you don't want to say or do anything that's going to compromise that. So then you eat this burger and it starts from something just as simple as that. All right, let's go back to the scripture. Verse 27, ye shall not so, around the corners. Uh, neither use enchantment. And so when that blood, you start eating it, it becomes a form of a spell over you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Without you even realizing that you're under a spell because it right. now binds you because you're now bound because... Mm. You're doing something that you know you shouldn't do because you want this thing so bad that you won't stay. You know what? I'll pass on that. Because you want to find favor in the sight of the hen, because you want to find favor in the sight of the synagogue, you will now bind, bind your moralities and the things that you know you shouldn't do and culturally we didn't do. And you'll, right. you'll put that to the side in order to find favor with these people. And then you be, that's enchantment. Mm -hmm. And that's how these things start. Mm -hmm. or an observer of times we know about mm -hmm. the hebrew maserot which is the hebrew quote unquote zodiac more or less to speak but then it says don't be an observer of time that's the people who find follow the worldly or the pagan zodiac hey oh i like you uh what's your sign <laughs> <laughs> Are you a soul? Oh yeah, 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 you, yeah, you. Yeah. And oh, we can talk are. now. We can talk now because we're the right star sign. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. How many times when you meeting somebody, when you used to go out on dates and all that? How many times does your date start out like this? You go out to eat. You know you shouldn't eat something, and they're gonna eat something that's unclean, but you decide to kiss them anyway. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> How many people went out on a date with somebody and they ate a pork chop or they ate lobster or they ate he said man, they look good. Forget this. And then you went and you started kissing them. <laughs> oh man. That's funny. Yeah. Oh, man. That's so funny. this is this is how these things start. Yeah. It's true. Yeah, understand too with the blood. Um, you know, from a spiritual perspective, blood. You know, uh, you is used to make covenants, whether good or bad. So when we look in the old, uh, what's what um, the unlearned may call the Old Testament, when we look mm -hmm. there, when Moses, you know, came down the mount, he sprinkled the Israelites, you know, seven times with the blood, so on and so forth, right. and then 
you know, moving forward to the New Testament, same thing, you know, you know, uh, Yehoshua, you know, died for our sins and it's through, you know, his blood, you know, right. we're cleansed. Right. So, right. Evidence. Okay. Let's read the script. Uh, starting at uh, one more time, verse 26, ye shall not eat anything with the blood, neither shall ye use enchantment nor observe times. Ye shall not round the corners of your heads, neither shalt thou mar the corners of thy beard. Now, neither mar the corners of thy beard. So what does this mean? Does it mean, man, I'm, I'm going to have this business meeting? I shouldn't get a haircut? No. But no. I mean, it's more in, in style now where most men just have beards because that's Israelites coming back in the truth and it influences the world, not the world where it's beard. But you go now to the business meeting or you go for this job interview and then you cut your beard off or you cut it down so thin that there's nothing left. And you're mm. now cutting off your manhood in order to get a job. You're conforming your masculinity. But they don't. Go ahead, hey, Can you hear me? I hear you now. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. I said, but they don't. Mm -hmm. They're not going to cut their beards. They're not going to do any of that. They're going to come to those meetings and be who they are. We're the ones that try to impress. Mm -hmm. We're the ones that want to fit in. We're the Fact. ones, like you said, will sit and, and they do. They will order food for you. It'll be a whole layout. And the first thing they say is, you know, they want this rare, that rare, whatever. And the food comes. And it's up to you to say yay or nay. It's up to you right. to say yes or no. You know, you got to say, we have to get to that place that we got to say no. Because that's right. not what we do. That, you know, we don't we don't do that. You know, we used to be like that. We yep. used to say, no, we don't do that. But now in order to get them coins, you know, it's like, oh, I'm gonna get some coins. Let me let me say whatever. Right. I'm gonna go up mm -hmm. in here and I'm gonna say whatever, you know, the hand need me to say, because, you know, he gonna get his other, you know, his his other brothers in on this and we gonna make this deal. And we're going to make this deal big. So you start right. eating what they eat. Because I got to get know, the bag. Start... Right. Because I got to get the bag. So now you eating what they eat and, and you mm -hmm. repeating and you start talking like they talk and you 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 put on the swag that they put on, so-called. And, and then now you've lost yourself. And now when you come back around your own, you start losing more and more touch with them. So now you cut your beard off, you cut your masculinity off, which mm -hmm. now you're not going to stand up for the things that you should speak against. Now you're going to let anything walk. But you got to remember, everybody is not in the truth. Everybody, of course, like you, um, Brother Jediah, did not grow up knowing these right. things. So now you think about Christian church. The, well, we are the church, but when you think about the building. The, and right. and how they how they roll. Nobody's in church saying, um, you know, they're not reading Leviticus and saying you shouldn't be eating blood, mm -hmm. you know, or you shall surely die. Mm -hmm. um, they're not right. in there telling you you should you should have a, a have a beard and you shouldn't you know cut right you know do your edges. How many how many of our barbershops are huge, you know? There's, right. no, there's nothing like going to a black barbershop and talking junk and getting your edges done and, and with a razor. I do hear. I'm a cosmetologist right. on mm. top of a sink. So, yeah, we're going to get that razor, do them edges in the whole nine. Right. So, I don't do it. I know that. Did I do it? Yes. But I know the word now. You know what I mean? And you, you, when you know better, you do better. So they're not teaching this stuff in Christianity. 
and not to knock Christianity, but we got to knock Christianity because that was given to us in order to um, sidetrack us. Right. right. So we would not know. So we go in into these things and we eating pork. I used to eat pork. I stopped right. eating pork five years ago. I ate I ate shrimp and everything that was <laughs> running on the bottom of the sea. You know, I ate mm. eel when I ate sushi. Um, it's just so much that we we do and we don't know. I have right. tattoos when the right. Bible clearly says, "Don't mark your body." Right. You know, um, you don't know any of these things. And I'm gonna tell you, a lot of us, when you look at a lot of the the, the artists that are out, their bodies are marked up, tattoos everywhere, everywhere. Well, that's what I want to talk about. Cause see, I want to show the trans the the uh the transition where it wasn't norm at a certain time that everyone was all tatted up. It was these things weren't always the norm, and then it became the norm. Or even in the NBA or in the NFL, where the players, you know, weren't always tatted up, and now they're all tatted up. It wasn't it was a progression? And I'm kind of trying to help walk the people along to show how mm. the hand in the synagogue influenced our people and steered the culture to the right. left <laughs> through the music. Well, you know, it's like what um, Brother Amit, Amit was saying. He was going into the, the how did it get, you know, how did the music go to the raunchy, the nasty. Mm -hmm. So now you push in rap, right? You push right. in all of this stuff. So all the tattoos and stuff wasn't us. That was rock. Right. That was that rock was music. Rock. That was rock. That's right. That was rock. So rock music was the, the music that, you know, that was getting all the other kids. Mm -hmm. It wasn't getting us. You right. know, that wasn't our thing. Right. So it was like, how do we bring, how do we bring this all together? Now, I sung rock. So, you know, I do know that other side, mm -hmm. but so you got rock and the rock was dying out, right? Because hip hop came along yeah. and hip hop was the hottest thing. So it's like, mm -hmm. oh no, rock can't mess with hip hop. Right. So now the rock is dying out. All of the, you know, Ozzy Osbourne and all of them biting bats and blood and nonsense <laughs> dripping on their face. Right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. that disgusting nonsense, you know, where we would sit and say, that's so disgusting, ill, gross, right? Yeah, that was like <laughs> the worst thing. Like, you couldn't do that, but now... Right. right. Now, so now it's like, okay, we're going to take that nasty, you know, demonic stuff that they were doing because, you know, they were getting... And, and people don't realize that symbols mean a lot. When you throw in, and who father, I'll rebuke this before I do it. But when you doing this, that yeah. is Satan's horns. Yeah. And in rock, that was their symbol. But right. now who does mm -hmm. it? Hip hop does it. R&B. Right. R&B does it. Everyone. Yeah. Everybody everyone. does it. So now everybody's throwing up the devil signs. And then now everybody's copying, you know, whoever's doing the three sixes. So right. it used to be to us, it was the, you know, okay, okay, you know, you talk, okay, cool. But then we're not thinking about it. Now they do it and they curve it. And then they right. put it over the eye. Now it becomes right. the three, the six, six, six symbol. Right. And, and they put it over their eye and they're doing triangles and turning stuff. And now it's all this stuff with your hands. And it's like, well, wait a minute, what are we doing? So, so everything went from rock, came all the evil came from rock into our culture through hip hop. So absolutely. here come the tattoos and, right. and marking up your body because right. now you want to be a rock star. I don't want to wear the, the, the glitter outfits, the temptations in them was wearing. I want to mm. be a rock star. I want to wear the ripped up jeans. I want to put a bandana around my head. I want, you know. I did it, so I know. So right. it's like you start. It, it's it's almost and no lie. It's almost like you get um. 
I don't know if it's like you, you're almost hypnotized to get to, to come in this. Like it's like a it's like that's a, what I was getting ready to say. Um we we read the, the scripture earlier, brother brother logic's gonna come back in and I want to I want to show the scripture. Um if we look at the same scripture, what I wanted to say, what, what you was trying to say is is this it goes right back to verse. 26. Read that one more time, Aki. Yes, sir. It says, Ye shall not eat anything with the blood, neither shall ye use enchantment nor observe times. So, ye what's the connection? What's the connection? You shall not eat anything with the blood, neither shall you use enchantments nor observe time. What's the connection? When you start to eat the blood, your tastes begin to change. Mm. Not just your taste in food, but your right. taste in music, your check, right. your taste in clothing, your taste in style, your taste wow. begin yeah. to change. Wow. And in Hebrew, the word for taste is ta'am, ta'am, and ta'am is the same word for discernment. Because mm. in the the yeah. taste, you have to discern different flavors with your tongue. So in right. Hebrew, thought your taste or your discernment begins to change. Hallelujah. Then you, wow. Then you become susceptible to enchantment because yes. now you're vulnerable mm. because these things happen. So hallelujah. Let's let's read some more. Verse 27. You shall not round the corners of your heads, neither shalt thou mar the corners of thy beard. You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, mm. nor print any marks upon you. I am mm. Yahuwah. I am Yahuwah. Why does he say I am Yahuwah behind that? Because when he says I am Yahuwah after a commandment, that's something that he really stands on. So the reason why that becomes with seemingly innocent, but it's really not, but the hand and the synagogue knew what they was doing when they was influencing our people to do this is because it says don't get tattoos or any marks printed on you and these are the marks we started printing on us how many people mm. you know got this around their navel mm -mm. how many That's people right. have this on the low of their back how many people got that on their shoulder how many people have this on them so now because we're susceptible to the enchantment, now we put the enchantment on the body. Right. That's right. Whereby now Satan is branding us. Mm. And, and, it's, and it's taunting the Most High Yah. But again, the synagogue knew what they was doing, but our people didn't know what we was doing. But we didn't know what we was doing because we was too, too busy trying to be like the heathen, which the Most High said don't be like them. But we were in our mm. ignorance. Because the That's churches right. weren't teaching, they weren't teaching the scripture. That's right. Mm. That's right. So now we done printed our bodies, and it's and it's and it's a taunt against the most high because now the devil's saying, see, that one don't belong to you. He has my brand. Right. 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 And in certain cases, if you're getting like we just showed those symbols, if you have those symbols uh tattooed onto you, then he can now come into that becomes a pore on your body where the enemy can That's come right. into you and in, into you, into your flesh. That's right. And you know, you know what's crazy about that? When you get tattoos, you know, when we get them, we it, it almost makes us feel like we belong to something. That's the crazy thing. You mm. get it, and it's like, oh, I belong to, you know, like. I feel like I'm a part of music the right way. I feel mm -hmm. like I'm in it. You know, I feel like it's it's like a I don't know, I can't ex I can't explain it. But mm -hmm. you know when you do it it makes you no lie, it's weird, but it makes you feel like you belong to something. Mm -hmm. Like you're in 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 mm. something um mm. my first tattoo music note right here small i'm not sure no no about no boobies but right. it's small right 
That was my first one. And well, I had two done at one time. And right. when you get it, you feel like, first of all, I was, I thought I was going to die because it, <laughs> tattoos are painful. <laughs> tattoos mm -hmm. are very painful. And you go in, and I, and the thing that came to my mind now, and I went back, stupid, went back and got some more. But the first thing that came to my mind is what kind of demon demonic stuff is this? This is torture. <laughs> but you but you get it in your mind to do it again. Mm. So when I see people that have like tattoos everywhere, mm -hmm. I'm like, no, that's that hurts. Well, I have about six, I think, but right. they hurt. They hurt. And it's like you're and it's like your your because it it rips your skin. You know what I mean? It's like a razor mm. blade ripping your skin. And it's like, well, who wants this? But we right. do it because it's like, oh, do we fit in? Am I cool enough now? You know, and do I have that rock vibe now? You know, by by doing it. We right. follow stuff so much because we want it to belong. Mm -hmm. And for the longest, mm -hmm. we didn't know who we were. So in that 400 years, which of course was up in 2019, right. but before that, we were trying to figure out where we where we belong. Right. Mm -hmm. So do we belong here? Do we, you know, am I this? Am I that? I don't want to be that. I want to be free. Like the rock people over here, they free. They don't have to wear no outfits. They wearing ripped up jeans. They got a little tattoo and a and a you know something tied around their head or whatever and they just rock out how come we can't do that so then you get to the 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 90s where you have the jodeci and you have right. um um uh, r kelly and all right. of them wearing their pants sagging down and the tattoos yeah right. and they look dirty they look dirty and they look like they stink and i ain't gonna lie a lot of them do. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm serious. And you're like, why do you got to be walking around stinking? They're like, that ain't cute. Um, and but, Jodeci had that. You said Jodeci had body odor? <laughs> I ain't saying, I'm not saying nothing. I didn't say, I didn't say Jodeci. I didn't say Jodeci. <laughs> I, didn't say, I didn't say Jodeci. I can't. You know, I that's can't only a clip for tomorrow. I can't. Yeah, for you. Let me stop. Allegedly. Actually, no. <laughs> actually, a lot of people told me that R. Kelly had bad body odor. Mm. Um, mm. I never smelled him, so you know we we were never in each other's presence like that. But right. you know, you have the the artist, the 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 R and B artist now. You know, in that time, now they getting raunchy and they want to mm -hmm. be whatever. And now going back to what um, Brother Amit was saying, the, how the raunchy came in is now you got rap and you got Biggie. And you got, you know, Biggie then took little Kim under his wings and here she come. And turned her out. Yeah. You know, and he turned her out and she, uh, what, what? You got it going on. What, what? And then she start everything that's coming out of her mouth is raunchy. And right. and the women hear it, and we're like, "That's my chick, say it." <laughs> now we're now we start, you know, saying these words. Here we go with rituals again. Mm. Now we believe in what we're saying. So now we start believing what we're saying, and now we bees, and now we're mm. hoes, mm. and you know, now we're trashing ourselves. Mm. So that's the mm. trickery. Of the industry, sell yourself so much that you're gonna sell. You're gonna sell yourself to these people. I'm gonna make a whole bunch of money off of you, and you're gonna make all these little kids be like you, mm. and they're gonna want to sell themselves out. All mm. these little kids out here that follow Little Kim, the Beyonces, the the um. The, I'm gonna say the new ones, Megan, um, Cardi B, you mm. know, 
Nobody can tell me that Satan didn't give Cardi B all of what she got because she was a stripper. And right. not to judge her, but we judging the tree by the fruit that it bears. Now right. you went from a stripper with, you know, you went from a stripper that got on a TV show, you know, from the Bronx, and you know everybody like that little Bronx right. Spanish girl, cause she gonna talk right. like this and, and everything you want, you know, and they think that's cute. So now they following that. She, you know, she telling you how to strip. She telling you how she had to hustle. She got that money though. Right. They glorify these things. So now you got little girls sitting back mm. glorifying being strippers. You got right. little girls that wanted to be like little Kim. You got little girls that wanted to be like um what's her name that talks about she got uh, um the other the other uh personality yeah. Roman um oh uh, yeah uh uh what's Nikki her name Minaj. Uh, Nikki yeah Nikki. so you got Nicki Minaj and you got um you got them now where they have a sex on stage of course, we saw Madonna do it first. You know, Madonna was doing all kind of mm, stuff, right. all kind of rituals and all kind of stuff. And we just sitting up there like, oh, did you see Madonna? But when Madonna was, I remember when Madonna did this, that show, she did an award show back in the, the 80s. And I think it was the late 80s, early 90s. And she was, um, I forgot what song it was. But she was, you know, they had the crosses and she had all this black stuff on or whatever. And, you know, that was before we went a little. That's when we, right before we started going left, left. You know, black people were sitting back like, what's she doing? Right. Is she? Well, how you? You can't be. Uh -uh, now, now you blaspheming. You know, now we would say that. Right. But now we don't say that anymore. Right. I tell everybody that's on this live, go to Beyonce's Hold Up video. Pull it up. You will see her levitate in the water. Mm. You will see her talk about the Holy Bible. And the Bible is floating in the water. And she's saying, I plug my menstes with the holy pages. If that's not demonic, I don't know what it is. But mm. we are. It's my girl. Bay is my girl. She's levitating in the water. Everything that's coming out her mouth on the hold up video sounds like a demon talking. But we sitting. That's my girl. You know we they talk, put tongues. We, huh? We talked. Uh, was it yesterday uh, or was it the day before yesterday about that song by Color Me Bad? I want to sex you up. Yes. Mm -hmm. Tell them about how the one of the members of Color Me Bad said the enchantment and the seances that they put in that song, I Want to Sex You Up, and what it did to the listeners who heard it. Oh, I don't, I, I didn't hear that when you did. <laughs> you heard about oh, it. I, I didn't hear about it. That, that, that's what I was, we were talking oh, about. Oh, that was you, Morris. So tell them, Morris. I was like, I just, I know I just heard this. Go ahead, yeah. Morris. Uh, yeah, tell them. No, uh, back in the day, like, yeah, I think 2004. Um, I came across some videos that were exposing um, the rap industry and hip hop industry. And it was an ex artist, and um, he was giving testimonies, he was preaching in the Christian churches. And this one never left me, it was just it's one of the most like craziest stories. So, uh, one of the uh, one of the band members from Call Me Bad, I think he became like a born again Christian, and he went and gave the testimony because he'd been delivered from like evil spirits, and he had said that, um there was a seance, a witchcraft seance, um, when they were recording the song uh, from Color Me Bad or Sex Me Up. And in that seance, it was going to be that whoever hears this song and is a virgin, they would lose their virginity. And the testimony they brought forward was there were hundreds of thousands of letters saying, we listened to this song when we were out on a date and we lost, oh. our, we lost our virginity when this song was being played. Wow. So that, 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 was, that was going back like, you know, 1980s and 90s right but mm. i remember listening to that in 2004 and it never left me so every time i think about like secular music i'm always thinking about what have they done in the studio and that's what we really want to know like um what have they done in the studio what are the rituals that they're performing in the studios to cause like the masses and firstly the children of israel to to fall into sin and to be bound you know now about I that did, well what i did here 
which I don't know. Um, I don't know if it's true, and it's probably a lot of truth to it. So a lot of our songs, a lot of our music was mastered in um, Sony Studios. And I heard that they have this witchcraft thing that they do, these rituals that they do over the music, like mm -hmm. while they're mastering. So, yeah, it could be like, I don't, you know, we don't, a lot of times we don't know when mm -hmm. we're doing it, we kind of do it innocently you know what i mean mm -hmm. but all because you're just trying to do records and get them out and and you want your songs to be heard and you just want to you know you want to make money you want to have you be an entertainer whatever whatever but you're not thinking about what's done in the background you right. know we we're not thinking about the things that were done um in the background for for whatever to you know to manifest so right. like I can give you an example. Earth, Wind and Fire. Maurice White. When we were performing with Earth, Wind and Fire, Maurice White was, I mean, um, yeah, Maurice was already sick. And I didn't know. I kept saying, why is Maurice out? You know, what's going on? What's going on? But, you know, speeding things up to now where all of this stuff is going on, things, you know, been coming out. And I was always wondered how Earth, Wind & Fire was so big as a group. Like, songs were just, just, you know. Right. They just had hits, had hits, had hits, right? And I didn't put two and two together. Why Maurice White was sick and, you know, Earth, Wind & Fire was so big. So I heard that Maurice, you know, he was doing all the music and he was the one that came up with the name and that he was going in these weird places. Like he called his brother, he called um, his brother and the rest of them in to do the music and become the band, but he did it all. He went and did something with, with whatever and right. got the name Earth, Wind and & Fire. And then he must that's, have sold Earth, something out because he had Earth, that. He was fire, the name Earth, Wind, and Fire is talking about the elements that witches use in witchcraft. So that's why that's the name of the band Earth, Wind, and Fire because those are some of the elements that they use when they cast mm -hmm. spells. So mm -hmm. they named the entire band after that. You know, mm -hmm. we have uh, uh, Nigel Janica said they channel. I also saw a video where. Yeah. Thank Jay Z, where he said he channels when he produces, and and I heard that too. I heard that too. You you know Jay Z. You came up yeah. in some yeah. of the same circles, right? Yeah, Jay. Um, my sister Maria Davis. She was a she she was a huge promoter in New York. She did all the hip hop parties. Um, she had a. Mm -hmm. uh, a I, I, you know, it's iconic that everybody. She's actually on Jay, Jay Z's album, telling him to put the put the reefer down or something. She's talking to him because Jay and all of them, Fat Joe, um, the boot camp clique, the the um, the um, dang, it was so many, so many rappers. Right. All of them came through my sister's thing, right? And I used to work the door for her. I was actually, uh, you know, had, had my deal and everything. And I was working the door for my sister. But my sister also had FOI working for her and, and like cops, you know, that were off duty cops. So right. they would come and they would work too. We had to have security. That's how crazy it was. Mm -hmm. When Jay would come, Jay would bring half of Brooklyn with him. Right. Because they loved, they loved Jay-Z. And this was before Jay was even, you know, on. So I know Jay from, from that, from that, you know, once um, Jay-Z got big and he started doing, you know, his stuff, you know, we was all flowing with Jay. <laughs> I was flowing with him. That's my, that's my dude. Mm -hmm. But I was flowing with him until he did, my name is 
ho. Right. Blasphemy. H to the O. I was like, wait, wait, wait. Blasphemy. What? Blasphemy. You know. Blasphemy. And Blasphemy. So it was that, but it was also, I mean, because I ain't going to lie, I was singing the whole Reasonable Doubt album. You know, that was that, that was, that was the joint. You know, you listen right. to Jay-Z, you're going to know that Reasonable Doubt album. If you, you know Reasonable Doubt, those, then you remember huh? that song. You remember that song, The Evils. I'm trying to remember how it goes. Let me let me pull it up on the okay. screen here. All right. It's called The Evils, but it's really Devils. Mm. It was a play on words. Wow. Okay. Let me pull this up. I'll tell you something about this when you finish this. <laughs> this is crazy. Okay, reasonable doubt, Jay Z. Let me post up on the screen. Okay. Okay, here we go. It's a little slow right now. Here we go. All right, good. Reasonable Doubt, released May 5th, 1996, Jay-Z. All right. So this was the album, right? So first song, Can't Knock the Hustle, featuring Mary J. Blige. Politics as usual, Brooklyn's finest, featuring Notorious Big. I used to rock to that one. That was one of my favorite joints. That was one of my favorite Man. too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, Dead Presidents Hell. too, feeling it. The evils, devils. Mm. Wow. Let's look at the let's look at the lyrics. Do they have the lyrics here? And pretty much, okay. Produced by DJ Premier, written by Jay Z and DJ Premier. The Evils or Devils. Wow, DJ Premier did that joint Premier. with Jay. Wow. Yeah. A meditation. Go ahead, um, uh, brother, brother Logic. You want to read that for the for the for the Saints? A, med um, a meditation the, about the, the page. The 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 ads on the page is acting stupid. So that's what that is. Okay. Oh, yeah, no worries. Yeah, it says a meditation about how the desire for money and power corrupts the ghetto and all of its inhabitants, leading to violence and betrayal. The song title means the evils, but is spelled similar to devils, emphasizing that the temptation of money is similar to the temptation of Satan. DJ Premier samples Go Back Home by Alan Toussaint for the beat, along with vocal samples from Snoop Dogg and Prodigy of Mob Deep. Jay says this is possibly his favorite song, and he <laughs> likes how they sampled a gospel record on a song about devils and temptation, saying, I guess it's fitting that it's a gospel record because it's almost a religious experience. It's almost a religious experience because he was teaching people how to sell their souls on that song. And then this is where he first started really mentioning Rock, Rockefeller. He wanted to be a Rockefeller. And he was worshiping the people, the hand people. He was worshiping the synagogue in this song and the lyrics of this song. He was worshiping those people and said that he would do anything to be down with them. And then mm. after that, soon is when he started putting up the pyramid over his eye. And mm -hmm. that's when after this stuff is when he started really making his deal. But you notice that he couldn't be big until what happened? Until Big got killed. Until yes. Biggie and Tupac had to die. Biggie and Tupac, right. But then think mm -hmm. about it. Did the hand have insurance on Tupac? And did they have insurance on Biggie? That's what you so mean when, by insurance on them. Tell them, mm. tell them, tell the people the practices that the hand do to a lot of these rappers, so they don't mind these rappers when they when they get killed or shot. What's really going on? Really, really? They know that they 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 know that that's gonna happen. 
So they do have insurance. See, people think that you can't have insurance on somebody without like having their blood, you know, their, their, um, you know, to see if they, you know, have illnesses or whatever. They can have insurance on artists. They can have insurance on artists because remember, these are companies. So mm. these companies can have insurance on their employees. So mm. if they make more money when you're dead than mm. when you're alive. So in order, you know, and I remember saying it. Oh, oh, Father, hallelujah, Holy Spirit. The, the Ruach is always is touching me. I remember my friends are always like, Jack, you're, you're so crazy. You always say these crazy things. And I don't even think about them until after somebody say, you said that. Um, I remember when Tupac, when um, Tupac and Biggie died, right mm -hmm. after Biggie died, I said, well, I guess Jay-Z is up next. Yep. I didn't even think about it until later when I was like, oh, okay, I see what happened. Tupac and Biggie had to die mm -hmm. for Jay-Z to be the king, for him yes. to have his ring. But see, it wasn't only that. That was just the beginning. The whole other part was to bring Beyonce in, whoever sold her out. Somebody yeah. sold her out. Somebody was a mason in her family or some witches and warlocks. And she was already sold before whatever so right. some witches some, something was going on so that was ordained for mm. her to be married to Jay Z right um, that wasn't coincidence and, and that's the thing we gotta stop being so blind to it's yeah. like did, do you not see that in when, when you know Biggie and Tupac passed then Jay Z is the one that's on top and that you know, mm -hmm. did he start saying, singing about him being hove after they died? Yeah, that's when it started. Exactly. That's when it started. So he started calling himself that because he got hooked up with the hand. And the hand right. people told him he had to blaspheme the name mm -hmm. of the most high in order to get successful. So that's now right. he started blaspheming Yah's name. Even though we know y'all's name is not pronounced entirely that way, but it's the thought right. that he's trying right. to blaspheme and get the whole world, the whole youth say H O V in reference to him, basically that's blaspheming right. the name of the most high every time they speak of him. And that's why what he did is so abominable and so mm. evil. Yeah. Because yes. he has millions of people referring to him and then did songs. With that title, that and have people chanting him as that, calling himself the Father, the Most High in Heaven, That's which right. is just so unthinkable. If if any of them calling themselves um, a god, um, um, uh, what's his name, the rapper Nas, Nas does it, Nas, you know, Nas right. Nas so a god. Thing. Um, then then you have like people sleep. It's so much evil in the business and how the hand just like really just came and took over. But I'm going to tell you how the hand was able to take over. And that was because Russell Simmons sold it out. He I'm let New York come in. Mm. And he sold, he sold his people out. He sold hip hop out. Hip hop had messages, you know. Everybody mm. was coming with a message. You, you know, KRS One, all of them had messages. You had Public Enemy, all of them with messages. Mm. When, when, when Russell sold out, um, Def Jam and Leo Cohen and the rest of the crew, but Leo took over. It became demonic. Mm, that's when it, it became demonic. Break it down. And 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 that's why the, the Leo Cohen's like you how many people were signed to Def Jam? Think about it. How many people signed to Def Jam? And then who became who became 
the president of the black music department at Def Jam. Jay-Z. Exactly. So this is what I'm saying. It, it it's I was listening to, and it's crazy because you know, um, Rough Riders, the guys, um, the two, the two brothers that um ran Rough Riders, you know, that was their company, they were they were Muslim, right? And I didn't understand how I was watching, you know, after um DMX passed. I was watching him talk about all the stuff and that how DMX had two personalities and he had his demonic side and he had his side where he was cool and he always was fight he was always fighting trying to keep himself with the most high. But mm -hmm. see, they sat, I watched this video when they sat there and said and went along with it. Leor Cohen was the one that suggested for DMX to do an album cover in a tub of goat's blood. Leah Cohen yeah. suggested that? Yes. You said Leah Cohen had that. Uh, he came up with that idea. I always wondered, like, why did they do yep. that? I knew it was a ritual, of course, but why? And it was Leah Cohen who told him that. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, see, and I was just like, we and I was like about, what? Just like we talked about. Thank you, Queen, Queen Lioness of Israel. We thank you for the super chat, and y'all bless you. Just like we was just reading earlier in the scripture, let me pull that scripture back on the screen about the eating of blood, and then it, you lose your taste because mm. you're trying to get in with them, and you will be bound. You become bound, and you start accepting stuff that you know you shouldn't because right. you see the table. Leviticus nineteen twenty six: You shall not. Ye shall not eat anything with the blood. Neither shall ye use enchantment nor observe times. Mm. So now he was willing to do that, apparently to do that album cover with the blood. And then it causes you to be susceptible to enchantment and, and, and to make all kinds of mistakes with your own soul, which I pray that the Most High has forgiven him for. I pray he's accepted into the kingdom of the Most High because you can see, especially towards the end of his life, he was really trying to repent and really trying to come out of that stuff. And I pray mm -hmm. he was accepted. High. Yeah, I pray, I pray that it, you know, um Erica just had a video and I I'm I hope I still have the video in my DM. If I have it, I'm gonna send it to um to you and Amit. Um and then y'all share it with brother Tyrone. Uh Erica did a video recently. Erica Badu did a video with um a, a rock group some type of rock group and it all mm -hmm. it looks like they're all doing you know some seance type of thing and she's there she's doing a ritual they're doing a ritual putting her sister in this so it's like they're like you know bringing her sister in but, oh so i remember Erica's that video i remember that video yeah and she had blood in here right yes yes oh, and erica was in a tub with water and with she's water, doing something, she's black naked and she's doing whatever. But then her sister is in a tub of blood and she got blood dripping all over. And she, you know, she just partying in the blood, right? And the video got pulled because, you know, they were like, oh, Erica was saying, you know, black people started, you know, like, what's going on? And then and Erica was, said, well, what you say? It I'm was sorry. a bunch of people, it was a bunch of synagogue people in the room with them doing that video. I remember that video. I remember they showed the behind the scenes and it was all synagogue people in there having Erica Badu in that tub. And that's when I was hmm. just so confused as to how she could allow that to happen to herself and her sister. I remember that. Well, she, she she's, um, I mean, she, she clearly talks about stuff in her music that people are missing, but mm -hmm. And, and the things that she does, she does, you know, when you look at her and she's in the house, she got Buddha, she got this, she got that all over the place, over her bed, all kind of stuff. Um, she clearly does stuff and people don't want to see it. But that when she was like, I, we didn't know what we were doing. You had to know what you're doing, because if somebody tell you, I need you to get in a tub of blood. 
Do we go along with I'm gonna get in the tub? Heck no. Right. If right. somebody say you want we need you to get in this tub of blood, Jack. I'm grossed out from the door because you know I don't even like blood. I don't want right. to see nobody's blood. I don't like blood. Mm. You know what I mean? So it's like to get in the who, <laughs> you know, right. and you're not it it don't register to somebody that's that's walking walking in light. It's not gonna register to you because you're gonna think it's gross. Right. So Jay Burroughs mentions it, Jay mentioned in an interview where he had to sacrifice something while in the industry. He mentioned losing his mother. Was she the sacrifice? Who, Jay Z? Uh, Who? Kanye. Yay. Yay. It says, oh, uh, yeah. Yay. Kanye. Kanye said his mother was the sacrifice. He said it on on recently on his um you know since he's been like revealing stuff. He said mm -hmm. my mother was sacrificed. And then he blew up everybody else's spot, which made sense. He said, mm -hmm. think about it. Um, Dr. Dre's son um, just hung himself not too long ago, I think last year. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It was um, um, Michael Jordan's dad. It was Bill Cosby's son. Mm -hmm. um, and that too was a setup. Bill didn't go along with something, and he and all of a sudden, all this stuff comes out that he didn't, you know, put pills in these girls' drinks. Now, yeah, he did it, but they knew he did it back then, and no, everybody wasn't paying no attention. And we was good because y'all taught him that. Y'all did that. They with taught him. him that, right? So when he didn't go along with what they wanted, or they, it was something that they wanted from him. Now all of it, all of this stuff comes back up. Just like they trying to make Kanye look crazy by saying the stuff that he's saying and Kim Kardashian going along with it. Oh, he's mentally ill. And then you have Jennifer mm. Lewis um, coming and saying, you know, Kanye, shut the H-E-L-L -L up and don't right. say nothing. And blah, blah, blah. And then come on, baby, take this medication. You know, call me, call auntie. Because I'm going <laughs> to, I'm like, what is wrong? Like y'all mm -hmm. all sold out because we so busy taking checks from the hand mm -hmm. that we don't want to <laughs> tell. Nobody wants to tell. So now you got all these, everybody doing all these rituals. So it, it puts such a nasty taste in your mouth about music. I'm going to tell you. They couldn't even offer me a deal right now. They could. Right. I don't care if they said, "Jackie, we will give you a hundred million dollars." I'd be like, "Nope, no, thank you," because what comes along with that hundred million dollars? Oh, all my babies will probably be dead. You know what I mean? Mm. It's like you're going to sacrifice something. Think about the people that blew up, and see our people. First thing, oh, you just tripping. She want to say this or he wants to say that and, and make it look bad. Jennifer Hudson didn't blow up until her mother and her nephew wow. and, mm -hmm. and I think it was her brother that died. She right. didn't blow up big until after that. Right. Um, It seems like everybody that want to be big got to lose somebody. And I remember... When I was in the industry, like new in the industry, the the my biggest thing was I don't want to lose nobody in my family. So I kept right. saying, well, I'm not doing none of that because I, I think if you go too far, somebody got to die. And I didn't know what I was saying, but that's what I felt. I felt like mm. if you want to get to these higher levels, somebody going to die. And I was like, I'm not, mm -mm, I don't want my mother dying. I don't want my sisters dying. I don't want my brother to die. So, you know, I was like, I'm not doing none of that crazy stuff because I don't want to die. Now, mind you, I was still fornicating, you know, lying, doing whatever, doing whatever. But when it came to that stuff, no, I'm not doing that because I don't want to. Mm -mm, I don't want nobody in my family to die. Right. So, so you have a line that you wouldn't cross. Mm, that you right. know that you've seen other artists cross and then their, their careers took off that much more. I was just right. looking at the name of the album that Erica Badu did with with that stuff and it was called Baduism, right? Ah. And so as I was just focusing on that, because I remember I had that album and um 
And I, you know, I was, that's when the wheel started really turning in my head. And Lauren came out, you know, with some powerful music that really started making me really understand what was going on. But I so saw, do you think Baduism is a play on words for Buddhism? Or that she's starting her own, like maybe that's witch cult, something like her that? Own. that way? Her own. Mm. Her own. Yep. She has a lot of, you go to Erica's page, Erica has five point something million followers. Mm -hmm. Erica wasn't that big before. And all of a sudden, I'm, I'm telling you, every time she get with these rappers, they fall off or they mm -hmm. get feminized some type of way. They wearing like happy clothes. And, and then like this recent young dude that she's with, Erica was starting, you know, she had gained weight. She was starting mm -hmm. to look a little older mm -hmm. and all that. She got with that little young boy. Now she looked 12. And I'm like, is she sucking the life? Out of like, what kind of witchcraft is this? Is she is, is she sucking the life? Oh, it's it's some black women out here right now. They be cussing me out. They be like, she crazy. She just mm. jealous. Da 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 da. But I don't sugarcoat nobody's nothing. I know right. how we walk in the business, right. and you walk in the business with the mentality of either you already have witchcraft in your family, and it's you know you come from that. And when you come into business, you just take it and you, you know, and you get bigger. Erica, people don't even know that Erica is now connected with um, Rich, um, Rick Owens and his wife, who are Satanists. And they're the one, his wife is the one that's behind the Balenciaga stuff. His oh, wife is a demonic looking chick, man. that one that looked nasty, like who wanna go to her house? And man. and they and they are interior decorators and everything, and they do a lot of the, you know, a lot of the people in Hollywood houses and stuff. And it's like, am I seeing mm. this crazy? Or do y'all see them? You want them in your house? You know, back in the day, we'd be like, mm -mm -mm, mm -mm. they right. can't come in my house. They right. don't even look right. You know, that their tooth look funny, you know, the tooth look right. funny. Right. <laughs> it's like now they got all kind of stuff embedded in their heads and you know mm, these yeah. pointy nail things that, that look crazy. Now you got our, our women wearing all these wicked witch of the West fingernails and all this stuff that look like they can't even wash up and, and clean themselves. And right. then you know you have um you have our women doing a lot with tarot cards and you know witchcraft and then you know mm -hmm. they are when you down about this like oh this is natural here it is this is the, this is the biggest thing for us right now it's from africa and that's our culture <laughs> right. Now, right 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 that, that's, that's how a lot like, of people are. that's where they feel african, like they're, african, they're woke. um african Let's let's I'm, I want people to understand this as we watch this. African devil worship is still devil worship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whether it's African, whether it's European, whether it's Asian, no matter what it is, it's still devil worship. So yeah. even if it's going back to Egypt, the Egyptians worship Satan. Amen Ra, as we talked about in a, a video earlier, means to believe or have faith in the evil one. Ra means evil or the evil one in Hebrew. Amen means faith. So Amen Ra is to have faith in the evil one. So they worship the devil. And, and you hope for the book of Revelations, he says he is the Amen. He is the faithful witness. Right. So the Amen means the faithful one. Yup. They don't want to believe that though. They want to believe that History, um, you know, was changed. They that you know from Egypt, everybody was kings and queens, and mm -hmm. you know, we were royalty, and mm -hmm. they took us from my place of being royalty, and you know, our ancestors were the best. And I'm like, who told y'all that our ancestors was the best? And mm -hmm. and why are y'all believing that? 
Egypt was so good when you see, like, you, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that you sitting up there with a dog human that people was worshiping. Right. You see all this gold and all this stuff that they was pulling up all these bodies, you know, these mummified bodies. They they pulling them up and it's all this gold and all of this stuff. So obviously, when they were dying, they wanted to take the stuff with them. All this material stuff, they thought they was going to another world with the stuff. Right. And little did they know we would be digging up their stuff, you know, whatever how many years later, and that stuff is still sitting there. <laughs> it ain't going nowhere right. with them. So right. I don't get where our people want to go to this whole African thing and say that this is our heritage and what we do. And and they they want to, I mean, I get argued down about that. That, right. you know, uh-uh, that's our, and I know um, Brother Amit can tell us better, you know, because you want to tell us about that, Laura? I, I, I spend a lot of time in Africa, so I'm just listening to this and like everybody thinks that these are casual, like um, they, the witchcraft, they think it's fun, you know, they think it's all fun and games with tarot cards and even yoga going back to India. But what they don't realize is when you go to Africa and you see these rituals in front of your face, they're using these rituals at a political level to control money flow. They Ooh. use it to control businesses. They use it to control officers. I spend a lot of time in African prisons. So when you go to the to the men's prisons, it's like your classic cases of, of, of crime. But when you go to the women's prisons, they're using witchcraft. They confess it. They use witchcraft to do damage. So when you come in, when you come and seeing our people here in the Western world trying to get involved in these witchcraft methods, and they just think, yeah, it's just a bit of fun. It's just reading the stars and stuff. In Africa, no, they use it to kill. They use it to steal. They use it to do all types of violent activities. Wow. Wow. And I've seen it. And, and I've seen it. And because when you go to Africa, you 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 do um, come across witches. And I've, I've been there and I've tried to warn them about stuff. And um, But they, they say that they can't come out of it because they're looking after too many affairs now. So they're looking mm -hmm. after businesses. They're looking after politicians. And I'm gonna and I'm telling them that judgment's gonna come, and they need to repent and come out of this. And Yahushua will protect them. And they're like, well, you know, we can't because they're, they're they're now in fear of their life. So this is what the witchcraft stuff does. It gives you a it gives you a covenant with the enemy with Satan, and it's, and then Satan doesn't let you leave, and he just kills you then, or he kills their children. Mm. Yeah, and that's how it really is. So it's nothing to play around with. You know, they, they make light of it here in the West that it's nothing, it's just a bit of fun, it's innocent, they put it on the TV, they put it in the music as we're talking about, but out there, mm, it's, 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 it's a daily life and it's dangerous. And even, mm. even uh, and I know you probably know, even the music that comes out of Africa, yes. you know, the first thing we think of is, you know, that's us, that's our beat, that, you know, it's all yeah. about a beat of flow. But then when you see these people and their body movements and what they're doing, that stuff right. is not, that's not of the most high, like in at Africa, all. In Africa, there's two types of drum beats. There's a, there's a drum beat, which they use to praise the most high, and there's a drum beat to manifest satanic forces. And I've mm. seen it in the prisons, and I've seen it in the churches, and I've seen it in the streets. So these, these drum beats and these... Again, it's low vibration. Going back to that, they they do manifest evil presences. Mm -hmm. I've seen it for a time. Yeah, that goes wow. back to the scripture, the scripture I mentioned in Job uh, of the alternation of how the music crosses from being a positive to a negative. Also, um, a lot of times our people um, in dealing with the African, you know, spiritualism or whatever you want to call it. Right. They don't understand. They, they lump everything all into one one basket. They say, OK, hey, that's African. Everyone here, they have a, a lower understanding sometimes and say, well, everybody here that's black is African. Not understanding that a lot of times the Hamites who, you know, the, the Canaanites, they were involved in, you know, occultic practices, right. worshiping other gods. All these things can be found in the scriptures. So when you participate in these things, you're actually tying yourself to those gods. Yeah. Having to understand that, you know, though we, you know, in America, they give us all a blanket label of being black. 
you know, there is a separation. There is Shem and then there's Ham. Mm -hmm. Okay. So all that culture over there is not our culture. Right. When we look, right. In, the, when we look in the scriptures, it, tell, it tells us don't go back into Egypt. Mm -hmm. Okay. Egypt is a culture. There's Egyptian culture over there, but that's yeah. not for us. Yeah. Okay. And so that's what happens a lot of times. The A lot of brothers and sisters, when they, they get into these things, looking for some form of identity and they don't have someone to guide them properly. Um, and they, they, they grab on to this voodoo and this witchcraft and all these yeah. things. And believe it or not, some of these things or a lot of these things actually work, but you go down a path that you don't want to go down. Right. And they, and it, they ma it manifests. It does manifest brother. You're right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It does manifest. I, I just want to say something. I went to Erica Boudou's uh, Instagram page, 5.8 million followers. And her title is this Unicorn Mutant Cobra. I mean, yeah. Unicorn Mutant Cobra. Right. So when when you hear uh, uh, unicorn, what do y'all think of? Mystical, mystical Satan, Satanism, something, something in there in that family. <laughs> I, I really like what you said. Let's go to the book of Daniel. We're going to go to the book of Daniel chapter seven. Okay. Yep. <laughs> so this is for all the talk about unicorns and they act like it's an innocent thing. And this child is usually made to be quote unquote children friendly and all of this. So we're going to go to the book of Daniel chapter seven. Mm -hmm. Verse. Um. Let's do verse five. Yes, sir. This is the book of Daniel, chapter seven, well, starting. Actually, seven and seven. Let's do seven and seven. All right. Uh, starting at verse seven, it says, After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly. And it had great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. And it had 10 horns. Verse eight, I considered the horns and behold, there came up among them another little horn. Before another whom, little horn comes up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. So this one represents the Antichrist, the anti-Messiah that is on the beast. So we have the horn, and then when we go to Revelation, let's go to Revelations 5. Or is it Revelation? It might be Revelation. Let's see. Sorry. Revelation 6. My computer's freezing up a little bit. Okay, Revelation 6. Let's start at verse 1. So first we have the little horn that represents... What is the little horn, Brent? The Antichrist, right? Right. Mm -hmm. All right, so now Revelation 6. Let's read verse 1. This is Revelations chapter six, starting at verse number one. And I saw when the lamb opened one of the seals and I heard as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, come and see. And I saw and behold a white horse and he that sat on him had a bow and a crown was given unto him and he went forth conquering mm. on to conquer. So on the one, horse, the white horse is mm. the anti- Christ, the rider, the white horse, and the little horn is the Antichrist. So the Sultan Mashiach, the false messiah. So when you put the two of them together, the little horn and the white horse, you get a mm, unicorn. Right. Wow. So now they promote unicorns in spells, but they try to make it look innocent and like it's just a horse that's different than everything else. But Really, the unicorn. So she says she's a unicorn. She, she's saying she is the beast. She's saying she is the anti-Messiah spirit inside of her. 
So yeah. we have to tie everything back into the word and then you can decipher a lot of the evil that's being done. Yeah. And so we pray for Erica Badu to be delivered um, from the demonic strongholds of this industry. And all of, all of these artists who sat down by the river of Babylon and then their captives told them to sing a song <laughs> to make mirth in a strange land. Well, and then they sold their souls. Yes, to, to, to the same people. Yeah. Beyonce with the four horses. Beyonce did it. You know, bring she it, did it before. It she 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 was on the cover of British Vogue. Um, she was on the red horse on the, the cover of British Vogue, and you know, I posted it, and people, you know, there was a lot of people that were like, "Yeah, we," you know, because people are, are, you know, woke. But then you had the ones that weren't, that are not woke and don't want to be woke. That wasn't, that was the third, that was the third horse. So she had already done the white horse. She did the black horse and on another cover of something. But then she did the red horse right before her album dropped. And right. she, not only when she was, when not only when she was on the, the cover of British Vogue, on the red horse, I forget something was going on with China right at that time. Mm. And it's a connection with the with the you know what the red horse represents. And Whoa. China's flag, China's mm. flag is red. Yes. Um, and you know, it's it's all a connection, but the but then she comes out with her album cover and she's butt naked. On the pale horse. Yes. And that's her, that's her album cover. So now you have people sitting back, oh, this is just art. This is what they do. Mm. So you know, y'all are tripping, you putting too much into it. I put scripture. I put it, I'll post it and put scripture right there. Say what the what the horse represents. Right. What it, what this is, what that is, what and it's like you can want to deny it if you want, but Satan has authority. He is the prince of the air. He is the prince of the airways. Right. Anything that comes mm -hmm. over the airways, television, mm -hmm. music, whatever, he's going to have his covenants <laughs> there, you know? Mm -hmm. So he has permission. Mm. You know, he you know he knows that the most high honors covenants. So if right. we're going along with what Beyonce is bringing, and she bought she did all four horses, Satan already yep. knew that these are gonna mm. be released. He knows because mm. that's when he's gonna get his little he get his glory right there. Cause this, you know, right. stuff is gonna pop off. People gonna lose souls. Mm -hmm. But we don't get that. We, everybody sitting around. This is art. This is art. And even the even back to the the African stuff we were talking about. You know, she was doing a whole bunch of rituals. Even down to when she was having her twins, she would have on you know all of these costumes being some African deity, you know, and right. she's doing rituals and she's, you know, they're dancing in, in formations. See, that's what people right. don't understand. When they're on stage, they're dancing in formations. So you can be watching them and everybody is in, you know, these trance and they're screaming, mm. hey, Beyonce, Beyonce, yes. And they, and you know, they just out of it. Meanwhile, Everything she's doing is a ritual. Mm -hmm. And they doing all of this stuff and, and now you in it. Right. And now mm -hmm. that you now that you rebuked it, you in it. Mm -hmm. So you know it's what's making me mad about our industry is the fact that it's so blatantly open. Like Satan ain't hiding nothing. He's like, I'm not scared of y'all. 
I'm letting y'all know who I am right now because my time is short. So I'm going to let you know who I am. But we right. sitting back, you know, like we don't see anything. We don't see nothing. I don't see nothing. My eyes are closed. I don't see nothing. I don't want to know nothing. I don't want to see anything. Because we like the music. We like, you know, everybody want to sing her new little song. I'm getting effed up tonight. Right. That you know, oh, they got, oh, I got my drink. Ooh, yes, that's the new joint. And everybody, you know, going right, right into it, doing the videos. Because mm. I this is how I watch IG. I watch IG how everybody takes on um whatever little fad that comes through, whatever I call them rituals or or um, something to, you know, mm -hmm. lure you in. And mm -hmm. I watch how people jump on. Everybody just jump on these things. And they don't mm -hmm. think about it. They just you jump on it. Right. Mm -hmm. And and they, and they, and right, a lot of them are the challenges. Or it's just them jumping on, um, like I said, the, the Beyonce new song, the one that's out. And, and whatever she's saying everybody's going along with it and it's what she's saying is is is, is evil and you know everybody's doing the dance and then everybody you see everybody doing it. everybody right nurses doctors everybody posting it and and but they don't realize what they are signing into and then we don't understand why we are going through stuff in our lives because we have opened up portals. Mm -hmm. Yes. We have opened up portals from music, from yes. movies, whatever it may be. And now you're having bad dreams. Your kids are having bad dreams. Stuff is right. moving in your house, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever. And now you like what? What's going on? I don't know what's going on. Something is weird, my you know. And and your 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 mom and them sick now, and this one is sick now, and that, and or you sick now and don't understand why you're sick. Oh, mm -hmm. because you might have went out with your friends and wasn't thinking about it, but you ate something right. that was was a, a sacrifice. Yeah. Something that they, you know, they worship too. And you sat down and you like, you know what? These are my little Indian friends. I'm going to eat with them. Not knowing that they done hit the tambourine, clapping hands and singing around the house, doing all this stuff to, to these things that they worship. Mm -hmm. And they done cooked their food and offered it up to them. Had them, this is your food. Da -da 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 -da, yes. Saying it, whatever they say. And then they done invited you over and now you ate it. Now you you ate it and then all this weird stuff start happening to you. Mm -hmm. And I know somewhere in the world, I'm sorry. I said you can even go to certain stores and then you'll see like, uh, say, uh, sometimes I'll see it at nail salons, the Asian right. nail salon. And, and, and you go by the door and you walk past it and you'll see the idol right by the door and then they'll have a plate of food sitting right in front of the idol. That's right. You know, they'll have food That's sacrifice right. the devils right inside of the store. So, you know, you know, we make sure always to go away from them. Sometimes they'll be outside the door on the outside of the door and they'll have food laying there and and the statue or idol. You know, so yeah, these are things that that happen. And 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 again, like I said in the in Psalm 137, they took our praise and then they used it to to um influence all of society and kind of prepare people's mind to actually literally accept the devil. So the praise right. that is written in our hearts that's supposed to get the world to accept the most high, these Satanists and these the people that are the hand, the people of the synagogue has bound many of our people and used their gifts in order to usher in mm. the new world order. And 
Mm. You got to think about the people who really control the money and we know who they are. You have to be the synagogue because if you control the money, it's only those people who can turn the, the world into uh, into where it says no man can buy or sell without having this mark. So mm -hmm. that's right. Control of the banks who we all know who they are. They have to be that synagogue because how that's else right. get everyone to, to, to buy and sell with this one mark? And they're getting people to, to, to make sacrifices in, a, in every industry, mm -hmm. whether it be politics, whether it be government, whether it be music, whether it be entertainment, whether it be sports and all of these things. And our people are starting to wake up and realize what they've been tricked into so that they can come out of it. I want us to read really quickly in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 30. Yes, sir. Starting at verse one. Mm -hmm. I'm pulling it up on the screen. There we go. Right. Deuteronomy this is Deuteronomy 31. This is Deuteronomy chapter 30, starting at verse number one. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse, which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, whither Yahuwah, thy Elohim, hath driven thee and shall return unto Yahuwah thy Elohim, and shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thine heart and with all thy soul, that then Yahuwah thy Elohim will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee, and will return and gather thee from all the nations, whither Yahuwah thy Elohim have scattered thee. Amen. Any Hallelujah. If any of thine be driven out unto the outmost parts of heaven, from thence will Yahuwah thy Elohim gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. And Yahuwah thy Elohim will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it, and he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. Verse 6. And Yahuwah thy Elohim will circumcise thy thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love Yahuwah thy Elohim with all thine heart and yeah. with all thy soul that thou mayest live. And Yahuwah yeah. thy Elohim will put all these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. Mm. That's and why they don't want us to wake up. That's why they don't yeah. want us talking about who we are. Because the curses that they have put over our people, the Most High will now start to judge them. That's why you can't even say certain names right now on the internet. Mm -hmm. That's why you can't even identify certain groups of people because your whole put all these curses upon thine enemies. So the ones who got our people to start selling their souls to begin with, these curses will fall upon them mm -hmm. and on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Verse 8. And thou shalt return and obey the voice of Yahuwah, and do all his commandments which I command thee this day. And Yahuwah thy Elohim will make thee plenteous in every work of thine hand, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy land for good. For Yahuwah will again rejoice over thee for good, as he rejoiced over thy fathers. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of Yehoah thy Elohim to keep his commandments and his statutes which are written in this book of the Torah. And if thou turn unto Yehoah thy Elohim with all thine heart and with all thy soul for this commandment. Hallelujah. Which I command, hallelujah. 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 So when we turn back to Most High, even though our people may have fallen into all of these curses, and all of these traps, the high promise that even if we're in the land of our captivity, hmm. even if we were Negro astronauts in space <laughs> and we were in outer space or, you know, we were wherever we were and we said, hey, you know what? I'm going to repent today. And you or you're on a you on a, uh, a satellite. <laughs> the most high would take you back down and reestablish you and separate you from the curses of the enemy. So it doesn't matter where we are. Mm. 
If we turn back to him in spirit and in truth with the whole heart, he will break off these curses of Deuteronomy 28 and put them on the head and the minds of those who hate us and persecute us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have you got any closing thoughts before we get up out of here? Hallelujah. Uh, The only thing I can say is whatever we do, we have to wake up to the design of the enemy and what he's doing right now. And we have to watch everything that we, we we have to be careful of everything that we're listening to because now um, things are being channeled into us. So we have to watch it because you know, the enemy is very crafty. He's the great deceiver and he's not holding back no shorts. He wants all souls that he can get. So um, as much as we love music, as, as much as we, you know, want to follow it, our friends, we have to be careful of everything now. The music, the singing along, the, you know, going to eat with, with our friends, whatever. We have to walk with open eyes and we have to stay in prayer. Um, Zion Marley said it so perfectly yesterday yeah. um, when he was saying, repent, repent, mm. repent. <clears throat> And repentance means change. Yes. We have Mm -hmm. to repent. We have to come out of our old ways. The Most High is waiting for us to reach for him. Because when when we reach for him, even though, you know, it's a lonely, and now he said it too, it's a lonely journey because now you're going to have a lot of people coming up against you. But just know that the Most High said, I will never leave you nor forsaken you. So as as lonely as we think we are, we're not going to be lonely when we in heaven. I can tell you that. (laughs) We're not going to be lonely, you know, when when we look around and it's like, okay, you made it. Oh, you made it too? You know, and we right. we all changed, and <laughs> you know, he didn't right. called us out. He didn't cleansed us. So we just have to be, you know, careful and watch, watch. And it could be your brother, your sister, your mother, your father, whoever. It's a lot of people going against the Most High and and Yahushua Hamashiach. So we have to watch everything that we're doing and if our family members are wrong we got to walk away we have yes. to yep. i don't care who it is if your children wrong you gotta you can love them but you gotta walk away from what they're doing you can't you can't sugarcoat it so mm. while we get our dance on y'all you know let's get our dance on of praise um yes and there's nothing wrong so with you are. know having a good old a good beat and and, and calling out you know yeah, in, in the name of his son, Yahusha Hamashiach. Like, there's nothing wrong with it. You could just oh, sing and get your groove on in the house all day. And I'm going to start making some of these songs. So, y'all get ready for that because it's coming. Oh, it's yeah. coming. Right. Oh, yeah. I'm going to put you in, I'm gonna put you in some contact with some really great people that's going to help you in that direction as well. Y'all willing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, More Amit. Uh, final thing I would say is, is that, <clears throat> you know, we spoke a lot about ex- the exposure of the industry, but just like yourself, like, you know, you've come out of the industry, you know, there's probably, <clears throat> you know, you'd know better than us. There's probably some, uh, some people in the industry just uh, following the most high um, secretly because they're in fear of like what the world are going to say, but also maybe they're in fear of what like people in Israel are going to say. So, um, mm. you know, the that we've, we've, mental we've, spirit, exactly, or not, like the spirit. lack of support, mm-hmm. right? That's that's where I'm going with more. And uh, like, so my question is also, how do we need to be as leaders so we can uh, we can shepherd these people who want to come out <clears throat> that don't want to be judged, that want to be cleaned up, that need like soul ties broken, that just need that need leadership, need guardianship. You know, bishops of souls, the scripture talks about. So, like, uh, how do we need to be and what needs to happen from from a perspective of the children of Israel and the leaders and the mores 
in the nation to, to do with these things, Jackie? Well, for the, how I see it is um, we need more people like, you know, you and Brother Jediah, Brother Tyrone, like we need more people that are going to be open for the ones that are scared to come out. You know, there's so many of us that are scared. So many, so many of us that are scared to even say we're the Israelites. Like we can't say that because you know, right. the, you know, the hand might say something against us. We got to stand strong and and say no. This is my heritage. I don't care what y'all talking about. Prove it. <laughs> you know, that's right. that's the that's what we got to get to. Prove it. Prove it. Prove that's you in Deuteronomy 28 to 29. Prove that's you. Prove. You know, you gotta you gotta know to to scripture start learning scripture to know, but we need people like, like y'all. We don't need the ones, because there's a lot of, you know, Israelites that are coming on and they're kind of making people feel like, you know, you gotta, if you, be, you find out you're Israelite, you gotta, you know, now you gotta wrap your hair all up and you gotta wear all this stuff. And then you gotta dress like you 3000 years behind and, you know, we're going to do the beads and we're going to do all of this. And then that's going to make us true Israelites. People don't want that. They're like, wait a minute. We in 2022, about to be 23. I'm not wearing, you know, no, no, my hair wrapped around and I don't wear all this crazy stuff. I'm not doing that. So then they shy away from it even more because you got some Israelites that are saying, you know, you got to change yourself. You have to cover up. You have to do all this. And I'm not talking about covering up your body because we're supposed to do that anyway. Um, because we're not supposed to wear stuff to entice each other. Like, you know, wearing clothes where you got all your, your breast out and your behind out and whatever. And you got men lusting over you. Um, they're going to see that. If you you if you wrapped up, if somebody got lust in their heart, they're going to see all of that through mm. what you're wrapping half. So, mm. but the thing is, we need people like you guys that are doing it the way you're doing it so that people are not scared to say, I want to take change my life over from the right. industry and not scared to say, I'm going to stand up to the hand because oh, the hand, the hand will make you bow down. Look at, look at Kyrie. Kyrie was what he, you know, he wasn't, it's like the, the, um, like the, the parable um, that Yahusha was was talking about on on rocky ground seed on rocky ground and mm. and his seed wasn't it wasn't sown well you know he was that seed that was like he spoke up and then they dangled some little coins over his head i guess and said you know i, I don't know you better watch it because we might mess with your family and he punked out and the reason why i said he punked out because he's not rooted he, you know, his mm. he's not rooted in the word. Mm. And he was scared because he didn't believe that there's enough. They're scared to walk away from money. That's the whole thing. They think right. that if we walk away from the money, we can't live. Right. Mm. And that's a lie from the pits of hell. Because right. the most high said, Don't worry about what you're gonna wear and what you're gonna eat. So why would we worry if he said not to worry? Right. If you walk away from all that money and all of that fame and all of that stuff, I did it. If you walk away from that, even though you might have to struggle a little bit because he still he still wants you to walk in faith. You're going to be all right, though. And that's the thing. You got to know you're going to be all right, even if you have to, you know, go back to oodles and noodles for a minute. Right. It's OK. Right. It's all right. But you got food. Right. You know what I mean? And they're scared of that. The industry is scared of that. People are scared to go away from the hand because the hand can take everything away from you because they own everything. Right. Forgetting so, that it's the most high, the earth is Jehovah's and the fullness thereof. Hallelujah. So they have faith to show that they believe in the most high more than they do man. And then that's I right. think that's where change actually starts to happen. And I think that's the beginning of what you know yay 
despite what people may think about him or not think about him, I think he has shown that he is not willing to be bound by money. And he'll say what he knows to be true, even if it means he has to lose billions of dollars to stand for it. And I think that is why, you know, this these conversations are becoming more and more prevalent in mm. society. So, brother, yeah. uh, Logic, did you have anything that you want to uh, say before we get up out of here? Yes, sir. Um, you may have to be a little bit patient with me. I have to be a little, uh, you know, maybe an extra two minutes on it. Uh, a brother wanted me to share uh, some scriptures. But uh, just touching on what uh, Sister Jackie just said, um, in Mark 8, 36, it said, what, for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? Just, you know, speaking to those who, um, in the, when, when they come to make their decisions and they're in their room alone, they're thinking like, well, all, I have all this money. You know what I'm saying? Do I give all this up to simply proclaim the truth or do I stick with that? So I uh, just want to say Yehoshua, you know, uh, stated that. Um, I want to share uh, some scriptures out of uh, Sirach also. Uh, before I do that, um, touching on what she mentioned about the idols and the um, eating, you know, going in and eating uh, food at these different places. Uh, currently, we're, we're in what we call the Feast of Lights or Feast of Dedication. Uh, some say Hanukkah. Um, understand that we have the demonic um, holidays coming up soon also. Mm -hmm. And a part of that, when we go over to first Corinthians, uh, just go to first Corinthians, uh, chapter eight. Um, I'm just going to read, uh, three scriptures from there, touching on what she was saying about going into these places that have the idol set up where they, you know, you know, ring symbols over the food and things like that. Um, some of the people in the audience may, you know, some of the Chinese restaurants, you go in, they have Buddha statues and, you know, all types of crazy things. So here in 1 Corinthians uh, 8, it says, I'll start at about uh, verse uh, number four. It says, as concerning, therefore, the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice unto idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world and that there is none other Elohim but one. Jumping down to verse seven, how be it, there is not in every man that knowledge. For some with conscience of the idol unto this hour, eat it as a thing offered unto an idol, and their conscience being weak is defiled. Uh, jumping down to verse 10, it says, and, and this is why we have to, you know, be aware of these things. It says, for if any man see thee, which has knowledge, sit at meat in the idol's temple. This is including, you know, satanic Christmas dinners, things like that. It's still though that food is still sacrificed to an idol, whether it be Thanksgiving, Christmas, so on and so forth. Verse 10 says, For if any man see thee which have knowledge sit at meat in the idol's temple, shall not the conscience of him which is weak be emboldened to eat those things which are offered to idols? So, what that's saying is someone who is new in the faith, they may not know any better, and they say, Okay, well, hey, I saw old brother Tyrone over there, he was. I just saw him coming out the house, you know, for Thanksgiving dinner or something like that. And then they'll start to think those things are OK. All right. And um, if it's OK with you, uh, uh, Brother Jedi, I would like to uh, share the four scriptures uh, from Sirach. OK, go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. So this is uh, Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha. Right. And uh, starting at verse uh, four, it says, use not much the company of a woman that is a singer lest thou be taken with her attempts. Gaze not on a maid, that thou fall not by those things that are precious in her. Give not thy soul unto harlots, that thou lose not thine inheritance. Look not round about thee in the streets of the city, neither wander thou in the solitary place thereof. Turn away thine eye from a beautiful woman, and look not upon another's beauty. For many have been deceived by the beauty of a woman, for herewith love is kindled as a fire and the brother said rap music and the current music we have tells us to do the opposite All of those of things. Everything that right. i just wrote. you know so it tells you yeah go and sit with somebody's wife and take her out to dinner and you know kanye said it best i'm gonna i'm gonna kill this ninja i'm gonna you know sleep with this person's wife so on and so forth right. so um i just and that was the brother of the word and uh you know so uh, Hold out the, so, uh, 
sharing those scriptures. Uh, that's the brother of the word. And uh, so I just thought that was important because based on the subject that we talked about tonight, mm -hmm. all these things that we're hearing in our music, because you could be going, you could be in a grocery store, you hear a song, you could be watching TV or a commercial comes on, you hear a song. So we have to be mindful to, you know, guard our eyes, guard our ears, right? Understand what Job said in Job 30, 31, how music can be one thing one minute and then it can be something else the next. Mm -hmm. All right? right. And so, you know, that's Hallelujah. all I have. Sorry for being long winded, man. You know, that's okay. Scriptures. Hallelujah. 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 We're grateful to our family who joined us this night. Man, this was a great, yeah. great edification, great expose on what really mm -hmm. goes on in this industry and um and how we need to guard our, our eye gates we have to guard our ear gates we have to guard all of the gates of our body even um even you know when it comes to fornication we have to guard those gates as well because it's through these gates that the adversary can gain access unto us and so the most high wants us to keep ourselves set apart so that we can vessels for the rock high to help mm -hmm. bring about this awakening and the deliverance from this bondage and captivity Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mori, did you want to you want to say a prayer and close us out with prayer? Yeah, let's go for it. Uh, Father, we bless your holy name and we give you all glory. Yehovah Elohim of Israel, the Elohim of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We bless you. You are the Elohim of our salvation. We give thanks to thee for this night. We give thanks to thee for Yehoshua HaMashiach, King of Kings. We give thanks to thee for the Ruach HaKodesh and we pray that you protect all of us, as we've come for this um, exposure tonight, protect everyone that's watched this broadcast. Watch over the children of Israel. Watch over all of us, Most High Yah, as this broadcast goes forth. And pour your blessings upon all of us that have partaken and all those that will watch this broadcast. But Yah Most High, have mercy upon those that are lost in the industry. Yeah. For who will go to such a people? Who will go to such a people? Who will be available to such a people? We know the wickedness has happened. But Most High Yah, we know your grace is also available to them. So Father, in your Yehoshua's name, bring out those that you have elected for salvation. Bring forth those out and help us as a nation to be ready to receive them, to help them get cleaned up. And Father, be with us. And um, and I pray, Father, over Kai Yeshua Ministries, a continued protection and a continued growth and a blessing over everyone in the house. Ba'ashem Yehoshua. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Family, this was a blessed night tonight, and we thank you for all the family who come to stay and watch with us during this, this broadcast. To our beloved sister Jackie McGee in the house, mm -hmm. bringing that fire as usual. All praise to the Most High. We thank that you join us. Hallelujah! And for your Hallelujah. um your groundbreaking interview that you did early in the week, you know we still get messages about that mm -hmm. and the impact. Yeah. The impact, you know, of it was powerful. So we just thank you for sharing your testimony, um, uh, brother Logic. Love you, brother. Appreciate you, of course, reading and. And standing up, and my beloved Moray, I met y'all. Bless you, bless you, bless you. I bless you. I keep you to pour into you and Beit yeah. Elohim in the UK. So we thank you, family, for joining us. Um, look forward yeah. to um, seeing you this Shabbat Eve, Saturday night. We got a great study that's planned for y'all with um, our Elder Zohar coming back with some more heat. Hallelujah. And, um, <laughs> Have oh, yeah. some, uh, some more special guests on the panel with us this sat after the Shabbat, so you do not want to miss this one. I'm mm -hmm. telling you, these Shabbat ones after the Shabbat ones been real fire. So oh, the Most High is keeping that heat going. So look forward to uh, fellowshipping with you then, and may the Most High give you a peaceful, blessed night, rest, and into preparation day tomorrow and into the Shabbat. So y'all bless you, Shalom, peace, Shalom. and take care. Shalom. 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 Shalom.